well, numbers to do it. It's and then other counties and cities, just to avoid the everything, they just say uh, a moment of silence instead of a prayer, you know, because, yeah. I, I think we're okay with a prayer for now until I guess we have some really complaints. Until we have issues, but well, I mean, I want to continue it as long as we can because I think it's silly to bow to some of that nonsense of people getting upset over things. Amen. Oh, John, I think there's, there's, there's an opinion. I, I was just saying that you saw that email. You had a request to give a prayer. Nope. And up until COVID. now, I've always said just no, the, just because just the flu. I don't want to open it up. And it was bad. Oh, yeah, some For one day there, it was, well, actually two days there. It was bad. bad. You got to allow so, the whole family get it. Every, it went through the, the whole issue. family and started back to the other side. No, seriously, it did. It started back and started quick. Do you, you, know, you know him? No. I think he's cut here. Yeah, he's been to Weaver County before, has he? Mm-hmm. I mean, I'm sure it's legit. I don't think there's any problem with him. I'm just concerned about opening it up to. I mean, Isn't guy. he the only one we've ever had to do that? Is I've he the same guy other, that. I've had one other. Well, he's asked twice. That's but I've what, had that's one what other I besides him, too, in the past. So I. Jared, did you send this over to everybody? It's Morgan County Fair Plan. Yeah, he did. I did. Okay. But he emailed it out. Not that version. The version with the skate park. The latest oh, version. Well, I have, you've got a copy. Oh, of it. is there? So a you do have a copy. That's different than that. This one. is an older one. I looked at the one version you sent out. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's, let me look at it. Then. There's a new version that you guys got today, I think. Yeah, you sent it out today. Was it today? Do you have a New Year's resolution to look better this year? Because you're looking good. <laughs> <laughs> I took enough. I, he's looking good. I shouldn't laugh at that. I don't, I'm not laughing. <laughs> I look at. That's a good laugh. I took enough grief at church Sunday. <laughs> looking spiffy. Well, you know what's funny? Hey, where did we go to that USAC conference out? In Bryce City. Bryce Canyon. Usually, if you look over here, we have our soda drinks and our donuts, and it's the new year. Waters. Wow. Yeah, this is water. <laughs> you guys are I've had water all year. On <laughs> well, at least for now, for today. <laughs> You're not expecting yeah. it to be a rough <laughs> meeting. It's looking like a year. I don't all the whole time, but. <laughs> <laughs> well, look at that tower of candy. Well, don't put it over here. Put it over there. Well, I don't think I can. Here, pass it to you guys. See, and we were just talking about how these guys were doing really good. With yeah. yeah, no sugar over here for me. Sugar. That's my New Year's resolution <laughs> so far. <laughs> this year. Right, I've, had a, I've had a few grams of sugar, but they're pass it down there. Matt may want some. Matt's a sugar animal. <laughs> Here you go, boss. Yes. We're doing good. Pass on the sugar. Is that it? That's we it. Take that? Yeah, we took all that we wanted. <laughs> the I better start bringing fruit. <laughs> just, <coffee>. just lettuce. <laughs> lettuce, celery, carrots. There you go, Susan. Rabbit. We'll eat rabbit, rabbit food. food. <laughs> <laughs> How about smoked meats? Well, that sounds good too. A beef jerky. No, oh, you're good one today. Oh, that's a good one. Yes, that is good today. That was delicious. I've been there in a long time. I'll tell you what's good. Have you eaten the Sunday from the Red Beard Barbecue, the food truck? I've heard you of it. Have you had their. They make a burger. It's a smoked patty. It's got smoked like barbecue pork on it. But the bun is two glazed donuts. <laughs> you have, you have a new Where's this at? Yeah, it's freaking amazing. Where's this at? And then they put, it's the uh, Red Beard Barbecue. They call it the Homer, like Homer Simpson. It's okay. two donuts for the buns for this hamburger. I mean, you have to eat it with a fork and knife because you can't pick it up. It's sticky. And then it's got like a jalapeno cream cheese in it. It's 
there's like spicy and sweet. So it's like an a actual heart attack waiting to happen. Oh, I'm sure. I mean, it's an actual I think my life. I love shortened by about a month when I ate it, but it was so good. Yeah. I love jalapeno jelly burgers. Oh man, what kind? Jalapeno jelly. You just oh. instead of mayo and ketchup, the ones with tiger. They make a good one. But uh, cream cheese and then jalapeno jelly. Good stuff. Okay. So, yeah, we better stop talking about food, or we're gonna have to make this meeting short enough to get some food. All right. Let's. We're we're just past the four o'clock hour, so let's get started here with our work session. Uh, John Barber and James Ebert, Morgan County Economic Development Strategic Plan discussion. I assume this is continuation of last discussion. Yeah, and I emailed you the previous version of the strategic plan, and then the red line version, and then we should all have a copy of it. Oh, how much do I have that I suggest this? I don't have those. Like they're, they're in the, they're actually in the packet. Let me send you what I packet. sent into her. Yeah. I'll yes, send they're in the packet. Now. Well, this is so what she just said. Said. At least the accomplishments. You don't have the plan oh, okay. necessarily. Yeah, I'm going to give it to you. So I guess that's where you got all that. So um, just if you've had time to look at the strategic plan red liners, or I mean, this is for you guys. What, what do you see that's slacking? What do you see that maybe shouldn't be there? Uh, is there any questions or concerns we can answer? Either that or you didn't hit it. <laughs> <laughs> Swing and a miss. Well, I've been known to do that. Well, and really, this is updated every year, right? I mean. Yeah. And, so and the reason I sent you the old plan to the new plan is you can go back and forth on each page and see what we've taken off and what we've moved. I think the most the most notable thing is affordable housing. We moved to a five-year because that's just not a one-year goal. Almost like James has been involved in all this stuff all year. Kind of weird. I so think I, one of the things we get added to the intermission is really to launch the uh, CRM so that we can be a little, we, I can be inputting information. Um, so if you have a question, you all can jump into it and see where we're at or get a question answered. Um, if I was hit by a skier off a snow basin or run over by a snow machine like it happened recently, um, you would have a database to be able to draw any, all the information and all the contacts at the center so on. So I think that the CRM is, is one of the other things that we have. So John, I'm, I've am i got the packet. I'm not seeing the red line in the packet. It's not in the packet. It's you it should have an two email. Two strategic plans. One that's Morgan County 2023. I won this work in County 2021. What day was the red line sent? Yeah, what day was it sent? I've got an extra copy of that. This is the red line. Okay. Thanks. I think basically some of the things that as a CEO board and I guess I'm talking on behalf of James is, is to um, seriously look about that RDA over the Mountain Green Town Center. Um, we had a meeting with Rulon a while ago, and that, that really seems to be the thing that's going to get that thing lit up. So, again, thank you, John. So, those are probably the two biggest ones that really start addressing the RDA and um, CRA overlays as we start looking. Um, through the IBI plan on, on suggested areas for commercial retail and light manufacturing, um, and then the CRM to then provide that information. 
Uh, the, CR, the RDA CRAs are involved in a couple different projects. Of course, the Mountain Green Town Center, which I think has been in front of this commission and the county council before. Um, but if we're really looking at something over in the nine, uh, excuse me, in the Round Valley area, uh, and it actually probably up in the Nine Springs, um, there may there may be some components of both of those projects that will need those tip increment dollars or a PID overlay to bring those projects forward. Um, and then if Peterson does at some point come online. Uh, I can imagine with the infrastructure need and build out uh, requirements, there may be some areas within, within Peterson that we require some of those tools. So it's probably a good time to really start learning about them more and implementing the new project areas that would make sense for the, for the county. So that's why that's on this initial one year plan. Have you had any conversations with Garrett about the existing? RDA, CRA for the Mountain Green area? I had a, a brief conversation with him in his office um, and really wanted to bring the commissioners kind of online. Even if we just started with the portfolios, um, to kind of have some initial discussion on, on what we had personally out there um, and then really make an evaluation if that initial project overlay for the Mountain Green Town Center was appropriate and that's what the county wanted. Um, or if we should look at amending it, if that was possible, it was passed by resolution. But again, there was no formal action taken beyond that initial that initial uh, overlay approval as far as you know, the percentages and timelines and the, the date that it that starts, starts and ends. So we had that initial conversation. I didn't go any deeper than that because I just thought we should have commissioners around the table and really so he didn't have to rehash everything. And so he said he had some work to do to investigate. And is that the the resolution that's adopting essentially a project area for purposes of the RDA slash CRA? Yes, sir. But it did not have any percentages of TIF. Yeah. Or for a budget. Or it didn't have, a, I believe it had a budget, but I'm not sure that the budget was a budget that the county would want to work off of. Um, well, I mean, usually the budget's going to be formulated on the basis of a proposal, and the proposal has to be informed by the development that it applies to, and the so there shouldn't be any budget that's in existence that works for us at this point. So I I think that if we are looking to move any kind of development proposal forward within that area and utilize the economic incentive as available through the redevelopment agency we need to get that we need to convene as <laughs> the development agency look at what's there and then ultimately a developer is going to have to come forward with a proposal we can't it, it's not something i think the development agency can do in the abstract i mean we could certainly talk about goals and objectives and priorities but we're not going to take the two nickels we have to rub together and advance the development project. So, um, I'm a thousand percent on board with that. I think it would probably be good to have some scenario based conversations to better understand it. But to your point, Commissioner, I think you have to actually have the CRA proposal in front of you to start the evaluation process. And for purposes of our initial discussions, don't you believe we should meet as the redevelopment agency? Just I, I know it's the same people, but we probably should do a meeting, even if it's in, ahead of this meeting in the four o'clock hour or after, you know, immediately following. So, Garrett, I, I know you're in the middle of a conversation. <laughs> Sorry. The best time to get a commitment. <laughs> <laughs> Just say yes, and then we'll move on. <laughs> um, can you? I, I don't. You may have already looked at this, and if not, then take the time to do it. But can you figure out how what we need to do in order to meet together as? I'm not sure if it was organized as a community reinvestment agency or a redevelopment agency, but either way. It, which is kind of the outdated term, but I, I'd like to get a meeting scheduled 
and then I'd like to at that meeting be able to evaluate what's in existence and what needs to be updated or completely redone with respect to what's in existence so I mean if we had adopted a project area um, then I'd like to take a look at that to see if it is the parameters that we want it to be or if it should be expanded or contracted and then what actions we need to take in order to be ready to receive a development proposal correct me if I'm wrong but we have an attorney that we had hired that did work specific to this he was paid previously through a the pass developer. through from the developer but yeah. it was our attorney yeah I, I think it was Smith Hardvickson that did it if I remember right and and I I don't Harvick think said. that's a why not Lewis Birmingham? I see I thought they were economics the packets well, from they did it. I don't to be honest with you Bobby I don't remember who the attorney was yeah it may have been Smith Harvison I mean Randy Larson is another person that firm Gilmore Bell would be someone that we could contact that represents municipalities and counties in that connection but if you could just look at where we're, you think we're at and and we just need to and let us know what we need to get how to, to schedule it I assume we just notice it up like a county commission meeting but I don't want to notice it up and then not have anything for purposes of review and because that was before my time on the Commission I don't have anything but if we could look into that do you have any ideas who might have those records that's what I'm thinking that attorney would have it okay some of that but then but some I think Stacy yes yeah, Stacy uh, had a lot of that information and maintained it as the clerk's so it should okay. be at the clerk's office so do we know who's on that RDA or is it us it's, it's us. us okay but we we will adjourn as the Commission or start the meeting not as a Commission and as an RDA board okay. so if you have it beforehand you, it's an RDA board meeting okay I, am, uh, is my question making sense to you yeah okay because I, I don't want to I just I want to get it together I want to get prepared to, to move forward if we get a proposal and so forth I, I think I, I support moving affordable housing to a long-term goal I don't know if you feel like there's any affordable housing initiatives that can be undertaken in the current year so I, I think as we as you now we convene as an RDA board I think there can have, we can have some discussions on specific requirements that you may have as an RDA board to provide incentives for affordable housing components within developments that are partaking or participating and in the past that sometimes has been a 10% take that's gone into a fund but then that 10% just sits there and so you know, I think there will, be, there will be a good discussion on what that would look like and how you would provide those incentives, whether they're set aside or whether they're actual uh, pieces of the um, uh, development. But I do think that you can, that can be a, a good place to at least start um, some of those affordable housing conversations in the RDA board. I always said to people, government entities don't build anything, so why would you require them to build something? So you have to find other tools to use to do certain things. And affordable housing, I believe, is one of those. But I think you may be able to do that through some requirements in your, your CRAs and RDAs. But that would be the only area right now I'm talking about that I think that from a government entity, you could probably help the affordable housing housing mission that the state's going to hold away. And again, um, I was talking briefly to, to Commissioner Anderson about the upcoming legislative asks. And it would be very, it would behoove the commission, in my opinion, to continue to have those discussions with legislators as affordable housing starts to be overlaid onto the counties because unfunded mandates become the methodology that has been typically used um, to do these types of requirements. And you want to get in front of that train before you're behind it. Because usually when you're behind it, you're going to run over. 
But it sounded like he was already from San Francisco. So, previously in the one year objectives, it said affordable housing, identify affordable housing needs and define. That's been moved to the five year goal. So that would just be an inventory. Yes, sir. Because if we could start with an inventory, then we would know that, like, what, 0.25 of 1% of our housing is affordable in Morgan County. I may be underestimated. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and, and at what level? Are we just talking the moderate income housing level, which is 80% of AMI for the county? Um, and... I mean, do we do we know what that 80% AMI income figure is in the county? Um, I mean, that that's all stuff I think we could do this year. Yeah. I think that analysis is something, and again, Marcia, we've had a good conversation about that, and I think the WFRC is implementing that's that right. tool. We'll be able to access that, I'm hoping fairly quickly. But even to the point, like if the... If, is it fair and equitable to the citizens of Morgan County not to bifurcate in-county jobs as opposed to out-of-county jobs? So is it fair to say that our average income uh, for Morgan County is 117000 per fact per household? But that's greatly affected by the residents uh, of Mountain Green, who majority of them work out of county? I, I don't know. I think those are discussions that we need to have. Because should affordable housing uh, be on an average house um, of nine hundred thousand dollars, but those house at, those numbers are are subject to one point two, two point two, three point five million dollar homes in one geographic area of the county. So I, those are we're going to have to get clarification from the state on some of those things. For particular counties like our county that really does have a delineating line. Um, between populations within the county. So all of this needs to be reviewed and figured out, I think, at a state level, and we can provide some record with this system. I would I think that that's not really unique to our county, though. There's got to be other counties that face the same situation where they've got area, and maybe the easiest way they deal with that is by municipality, and we are at a little bit of a disadvantage because we only have one municipality. But, but I'm sure there's other counties that have the same situation, you know, where there's parts of the county that are considered much higher income than others. Well, as far as small counties, I don't know who has the opportunity. I think yeah. our, popul our population is, more, is affected more by that than larger counties, for sure. So, um, but again, affordable housing, that's just conceptual. There's some work to do when you get up um, that groundwork first. To accomplish that. What was that, 472 you were showing? That's 80% of the, the average mean of the household, I mean the value so, of the household. So for a moderate income housing, opportunity in Morgan County would have to be affordable to a family making $472,000 a year. No, that's no, the, the house, price of the home. The price of the home. Oh, you've adjusted it to the home yes, value. Yes, I adjusted it to the home value. But, but, make sure think about this. That's based on the average of the county. That, that probably is affordable if you live, live in a certain demographic, but if you look at the wage within an in-county job, that 472 is an inordinate amount of money. Right. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, the other way to look at it is we, we don't think we need to have housing that's aff aff affordable at the moderate level. We want to go to the, the lower levels and identify some housing stock that's affordable to people making... 60% of the median income or 40%. And I mean, it's a tough discussion 
because there are many residents that don't view it as important to be able to provide affordable housing opportunities within the county. Um, but my personal view is that we're charged without, with looking out for the best interest of all members of our community. And to me, that includes the young people who are growing up that you would want to come back after they've gone off and gone to school and you'd want them to reside in the county. And if, if the only way for them to do that is to work 10 years in an industry outside of the county before they'll have the income levels necessary to move in, well, then you're missing out on lots of family opportunities during the interim period. And it can be a decision we make not to, to do it. I mean, that's kind of what's happening by default. I think in order to provide affordable housing opportunities, we'll have to be you know, if very it's framed, deliberate. though, in that, in that context, rather than, because I think to a lot of people, affordable housing is synonymous with high-density housing. Mm -hmm. And it is. I mean, in order to make it affordable, it's got to be higher density. You're not going to have affordable housing on 20-acre parcels. It just doesn't work. But I think if you frame it in that way, hey, we're not, we're not talking about building large-scale apartments because, you know, just to fit certain demographics. We're talking about people who, who live here and want to grow up here and, or have grown up here, and they can't afford to come back because there's not that entry-level housing. See. That's a different discussion, I think, and, and the public may view it very differently. than. Yeah. Well, and you can characterize it as workforce housing as well. Mm -hmm. I mean, if you're going to have... Which is a concern because our in-valley in -valley wage is, is quite low. Right. And then, but as, you know, Wasatch Peaks continues to develop, it's going to have an employment demand. A snow, ba snow basin develops, even if most of that development is occurring in Weber County, it's going to have an employment demand. And if we could provide some housing opportunities for that employment demand in an area that will also facilitate our economic development in the town centers, then that makes sense to me. So how do we go about doing that? I mean, they want to, we want to put it on possibly after this year. What about if we just start we got to determine what we want instead of waiting till next year and say, well, okay, now we're thinking about it. Can we start thinking on it now and have some meetings that have to do with that? Component? I think that's what he's talking about, the, the RDA or CRA discussion, because that's a step to, to incentivize it. I mean, at the end of the day, the county's not, like you said, the county's not building affordable housing. That's not our, our responsibility to build it. Right. But we can incentivize developers to build affordable housing and that's, that's a tool we could use to incentivize things. So that may be one step we could take to try to start that process. That, and, and I do think that this year we ought to, to get the inventory mm -hmm. done. And I, I don't even know that we need to hire anybody to do that, but I think it would be good just to calculate the AMI, the average cost, and then even if we just spoke to a realtor to and, and say, if you were looking for somebody for a home, at, for 350000 what's the available inventory in Morgan County? And I suspect they'll say zero. Yeah, zero. Um, and, but then we also ought to look at what multifamily products available for rent and what those rents are and whether or not that's affordable so that we just get an idea of the scope of the problem. And then, and then I think we could have the discussion about, all right, if we believe that we need some affordable housing in the community, or workforce housing or inclusionary housing. Different people call it different things in order to avoid other people criticizing them for talking about it. But <laughs> but what what level of inclusionary housing do you want to try to target? I mean, that's a discussion that we ought to have. You know, do we want to have a hundred units or two hundred and fifty units? Or you're yeah, is there a population percentage that you focus on and say we've got a population of 12,000 and we want 1% or 2% or 10%? I don't know what that number looks like, but I guess that would also help us determine what we might be willing to offer in terms of CRA investment. Yeah. Well, we have a resource in the CEO report. It's uh, Aaron Rogers from the uh, Workforce Services. He's probably a lot of that information. I'll bet he could, yeah. yeah. 
Okay, good. So we could definitely take that position with asking about that when we put my change that's not that be we want to incorporate with moving forward economic development, which I think we should. I mean it should be part of any package that any mm -hmm. developers coming in, if it's of any size, the work of the court of the we just need to figure out what and when. So in the interest of time. Because this meeting turned into the same meeting we had last time, as far as we didn't get our answer to the questions answered. But um, some very specific questions that Commissioner um, Anderson had and Commissioner Wilson had on, like what is going on, what are you been working on, that is all in that five or six page report. The very bottom of that report, I wrote a little thing about what my role is, and it's not only you know in my to, to create jobs, but it's really to create just the opportunities. And then it talks about once we start moving forward and get the IBI report, there's some plans that we need to come up with. Like, we're going to have suggestions on land use and development process, but we need to have a plan to implement that. We need to have, we need to identify the infrastructure needs, we need to have a plan to address that. We need to, to figure out how we're going to pay for all this, right, without raising taxes. So we need to come up with a revenue plan on how we're going to accomplish that. Um, we need to identify the qualities of this county we want to make sure that we're maintaining and have a plan to accomplish that. Now we've started that because we made the focus outdoor recreation um, and tourism, right, to minimize the impact as far as costs on the community, but also build out this amazing environmental um, assets that we have. Uh, but we, if we don't have a plan to accomplish that, then we're kind of one-offing and things aren't integrated or holistic. And then I think the last thing that I have in there is this community, uh, this community promotion plan. Like, who are our stakeholders that are going to help us move these things forward? You five, and the five after you, and the five after you, as much authority as you will, cannot change the community on your own. You've got to have community partners that are willing to support you and go out and bang the drum for you. And you need to identify who those folks are and really come up with a plan to accomplish that. What you just talked about, the affordable housing plan component, needs to be in one of these groups um, as we start looking at how we're going to accomplish this. Because this is a great discussion that needs to come from a committee creating a plan to move affordable housing forward. That brings you all this information so you're not trying to figure out on your own. You have it all and they can present it to you. And they can answer all the, all the questions that, um, that were just asked um, by Robert. So, there's a quick report. These are some conceptual ideas on how you, the areas that I think that you need to kind of create plans on. So I have, or others have, marching orders to start accomplishing these things you want. Um, but in closing, I just want to make sure on that red line first year, uh, or this next year plan, is there something that is very passionate to you, besides a restaurant, that you want to get accomplished this year? Um, understanding that if we bought off too many bikes of the elephant, we'll never, we'll never make much headway. But if there's something that you are seeing that has to get done, I want to make sure it's on this plan so we can, uh, we can get into this plan and move it forward. I noticed one thing on number nine um, that I know you had been working that you didn't put on here. I know you had been working on um, monies to offset monies we expended. Yes. Any any way you could tell me where we're at on that? Yeah. I, so we created invoices and I sent them out. They've all been sent out. I don't know if in your accounts receivable what you received or what's uh, still pending. What's on your 30, 60, or 90 days? You know that you're you're waiting for. If someone wants to let me know who has paid, I have no way to tell who has paid and who hasn't paid. But I had great conversations with everybody. Um, I feel like if we do a circle, the only one that may be a concern right now is CW Lands, only because they had to change of ownership. Like good days left, and I think another group's taken over. I did talk to. Uh, some individuals that had came that came and we talked about some opportunities commercially there and let them know that there was an outstanding invoice for them. Um, but if someone wants to let me know who's paid and who hasn't paid, I'd be happy to do some follow up on that. So I guess that's Kimberly, huh? Yeah, we'd have to ask Kimberly. I've, I've seen a few come through, but 
Um, I haven't seen very many. There's only like there was only six, five or, six. or seven, right? Yeah. 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 So there won't be a lot in terms of numbers. No, the value is about seventy thousand. So, um, so I would recommend then that we put back onto the one-year plan or a five-year plan, but starting with a one-year, is this work affordable housing initiative, whatever we need to do. However you want to design it, that's what I would recommend, is that we get it together, committee, however, go to the state, get the resources out there, and then have a discussion, a work, another work session on um, affordable housing after we come up with all the numbers, the figures, and all that kind of stuff. So Bring maybe the maybe in. for the one year, James, it's it's as simple as um, identify the needs and and then discuss mm -hmm. potential plans or options for moving forward to, okay. to develop. And, and then I have a question um, in the plan. Let me get back to the plan. Uh, you have on, I don't know what page it was on. Anyway, under business development, um, you had identified business opportunities in Mountain Green ten Town Center. Number one was identify a developer. Is there a reason why we pick one when we have so many different owners of that town center? Can anybody explain that to me? Well, the landowners are going to be in control of that. Um, the largest holder is Johnson, I think. And um, he may or he may not work with Rule and Gardner. I, I don't know. It's, it's like a weekly change in terms of that. So... I don't know. I if identify. I don't mean. I don't think that means the county chooses. No. That okay. might mean. Can Just we figure out who it is? Okay. All right. <laughs> I got it then. The reason behind that, Blaine, is is we want to identify who the developer actually is, so that we can work with that developer before they start implementing plans and processes and financing that isn't going to work. So we don't waste their time. We, we, I know a land, someone who bought a piece of property and didn't realize that property wasn't zoned. The developer got in and started making plans, and, you know, architectural design, and they realized, well, none of this would work because we weren't in the process early enough to help them identify what their list of needs were before they got to the need number 10. They spent a bunch of money, and they wasted a bunch of money. So my attempt is, and hopefully I can work with Josh, when somebody starts um, applying, that I'm notified, I can reach out to the developer because you've identified them and said, okay, let's go through your project really quickly. What are you looking at? Let's see if it's zoned, let's see what your infrastructure needs are, uh, et cetera, so on. And that's why it says identify the developer. Okay. James, I actually have one ad, and I apologize for not bringing this up earlier. Yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of a. 4 The light came on. Um, we're, discussion, we're discussing tonight. Um, the property around the fairgrounds that the county owns yes. uh, plan for that and and we really want to I think there's been enough energy that we're going to really see um, start figuring out what we want to do with that area okay. and um, I'd love to see some kind of action on that this year to a degree uh, what, what, what that we, may be we don't know but. what should we call that how should I identify that fairgrounds um, we participate in the recreational plan surrounding the fairgrounds or just the fairground call it, expansion. Call it Fairgrounds Regional Park. Foreground, okay. Yeah. Fairground we, we used regional okay. park funding to pay Field for out. the pickleball court today. Okay. Okay. I like it. Um, James, you asked what we'd like to see accomplished this year, and I'm just kind of still formulating this idea in my mind, so bear with me just a second here. Um, you talked about the fact that having a plan is, is crucial, and I agree. You know, we have to have a plan, and one thing that I think we maybe do well in government is come up with plans, but one thing we don't do well is execute on those plans. Um, I mean, I'll give you an example. that The county council years ago had plans drawn up to build a new 
county building and they were later scrapped, right? And, and we've got all these plans that, that have been mothballed for years and, and there's often reasons for that. But I think part of the reason that happens is because we come up with these grand plans and then we really don't have good plans as to how to execute on them or even what's going to bring us the biggest bang for our buck, so to speak. And thinking about this focus on tourism and outdoor recreation, which I think we can agree, or we have talked about and agreed on in the past, that that's kind of the route that we'd like to take with economic development. We recognize this is not a place for, for large-scale industry. We don't have the infrastructure to support that, but we do have the infrastructure and the ability to support outdoor recreation and tourism. And that's why we've engaged with, um, oh shoot, what's the name of the tourism? VistaWorks, thank you. VistaWorks. Um, so I guess what I'm thinking is what I would love to see is a very broad plan that, that incorporates the findings from IBI's study, our general plan ideas, VistaWorks ideas, and just lists out, look, large scale, Morgan King County could do all these different things to attract tourism and outdoor recreation. We could build a trail in this location. We could put um, more pickleball courts and hold tournaments. We could do a, a whitewater park in the river. All of these different projects that we could do and then very, really, really high level, what would this cost roughly? And what would our bang for our buck be? You know, what could we expect potentially in, in either visitorship or increased tax revenue, that kind of thing for each of those projects? Because I think that would help us prioritize a lot better. When we talk about this regional park, you know, well, maybe for me personally, pickleball isn't a big deal, but if we find out that we build five more pickleball courts and we could hold regional tournaments and that's a big deal, that may be a huge step for economic development and maybe the investment would be worth it for the county, you know, in that regard. And I think it also would give us a list of projects if we had somebody come in, a, a business owner or developer, and say, hey, we want to do these outdoor recreation projects. We could say, you know what, these are what we're thinking about and we'd be happy to partner with you on this project. If you wanted to build this whitewater park, in the river, we're gonna, you know, we would partner with you and, and work this out or whatever project it may be. I think that would be helpful to me. Perfect. No, I, I love it. So, as an example, really quickly, um, we talk about affordable housing. We have a PAD in review. I can't really build affordable housing or sell projects in that because I have no infrastructure code to accomplish that, right? So what I will include with this is the actual steps that need to be taken to create a plan that has um, these types of returns, but we've got to do all this foundational work first to accomplish that. So I think that's, that's a that's great a example in thinking process. about like recreation <laughs> opportunities. Maybe one of the opportunities is we say we've got a lot of farm ground that that uh, maybe isn't great farm ground, but would be awesome for um, recreational camping or, yeah. or small cabins or something like that, and we could, but the, the piece that's holding us back is the zoning doesn't allow that. Yeah. Okay, well, what could we do in our ordinance to allow to make that happen in certain areas if that's a, a project we wanted to move forward with? Well, and then again, to your example, just one last one. If you want to bring in a regional size uh, recreational opportunities. It does you zero good as a community if you have no way to capture the dollars associated. So you have no hotel rooms, you have no restaurants, you have no rentals, you have all, there's no way to, for you to capture that. You, it will help the businesses for sure, but you're not going to capture a majority of those dollars you can. So we'd have to have a component for economic development that would have a build out of capture points or additional capture opportunities. So those are the things we'd be looking at to include with that, right? And then with that is a whole, you know, bunch of new things we would have to do. Do we have the right zoning, to your point? Do we have a code that allows for, you know, those uses? So, yeah, there's a little work. I have somebody who I, I've already identified that I could probably have helped you build that out. That would be very helpful. So, okay. Awesome. Wonderful. Thank you. Anything else we need to add? Is Como dead? Como's dead, yeah. Unless I can find somebody to buy Como. Incorporate Josh has a comment on that, it looks like.
Como has submitted an appeal. Como's not dead. <laughs> Como's on life support. <laughs> so they submitted an appeal. They submitted to an appeal to the hearings officer. We're gathering the materials now. All that staff report. Um, they're appealing some of the stipulations that were attached. <clears throat> Probably the bridge, specifically. Yeah, so <laughs> yeah. The bridge. It's um, kind of a big one. <laughs> Can I ask one more question? I apologize. You sure can. Well, not that this is a vote, so I won't even ask for any head nods or anything. Um, but we were had a very off book conversation about if Morgan City was interested in um, what's the word? I mean, I annexing Como Springs into Morgan City. So I'm not sure where the commission would stand on that, uh, but that may be an actual item to offset. Maybe a different code or a different set of uh, requirements. But anyway, that that is out there. There's some maybe some discussion somewhere going on with that. But from my perspective, um, you know, I, I always look at when a, uh, a town or a, an area within the county got to the size where it could support itself, the incorporation was what the county wanted because it moved unloaded costs off the county's books, and if. Como Springs can succeed under a municipality much easier than it could succeed under a county entity. I would give them a head nod and say, please make it work. We'd be happy to you get listen. You're making nothing off it right now, right? So anyway. So I'm not sure. I, I heard or saw something about that. Did I see it on an email? But it, it said something like the the mayor was in support of that. And then that would allow them to use 100 North, but the mayor submitted a letter to us <laughs> saying, saying absolutely, yeah. I'm against this. So yeah. there's kind of mixed signals there. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, I've talked to him. Yes, Josh. Too, so. My understanding of annexation law is that the property owner submits to the city the request to annex into the city. The county really doesn't have a say or a vote on that. It goes straight to the mayor and the city council and they would decide whether to annex it or not. Hmm. From the county's perspective, I don't know why you would oppose annexation or incorporation because, I mean, the, the revenues we see from taxes are the same whether they're part of the city or not. That there's not really a benefit. I mean, there's actually a benefit to us if they do annex or incorporate. It's less, less roads for us to deal with, less, uh, you know, projects but meetings over it yeah <laughs> so i mean i don't know that do anybody we, would oppose no, it from this. do we have a do we have a role in annexation look the city wants to annex by law from their property boundary to the boundary that it abuts the property i think we're just notified i mean yeah i don't I think, think we get it yeah, yeah we don't right. even there's no yeah uh, to josh is a thousand percent right i think the conversation was we're all in this county together yeah. do you think there would be an issue I don't. I, think, I don't think it was asking permission. I think it was making sure that everyone felt comfortable with that. Yeah. Well, anyway, the the truth is the, the folks who were most concerned about that project are those who live in the city anyway. And, yeah. You know, I mean, we represent them as well, certainly. But here's my only hiccup with that. Uh, we talked to some private equity folks, and they're looking if they were able to purchase the property uh, around the golf course for a fairly, fairly heavy, they would look to work with the county and the city and Como Springs to create one large development. And by, 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 by losing that piece, we just add more players to that, that process. And that project is like a 5% right now, in my opinion, but it's just something to be aware of. So anyway, that's all I have to report, and we'd be happy to add those things to the one year that I just want to make sure these guys have the opportunity to question you and, and put their thoughts into what they want for economic development. Because that, you guys already know mine. I think Robert knows most of mine. I want it, some way or another. Whatever we have to do to get it to work is what I want. And again, all this is concluded in that report, but we had a great meeting with Rulon. Rulon's working directly with Dwayne. felt like the project was moving forward, felt like they had a new um, 
uh, rendering that really incorporate a lot of different things. He has several, I think, large tenants ready to roll on it. We're talking to the developer for Lee's. Lee's wants to make some major headway within this next year. That project, even though it seems like it's creeping along, is still creeping along. And uh, I foresee if things work out that you'll start to see some dirt here trying to very quickly if they can make a true plan. Not that planning is the issue. Well, they're, they're done now, right? I mean, we approved their plan, didn't we? Yeah, we approved their site plan. Yeah. We approved their site plan, which they can move forward with. But um, they don't have, they haven't recorded the subdivision because they haven't produced the real water. Gotcha. The water yet. Okay. Which I think they said they had. Yes. So, no, I, think I they, haven't seen it. Well, uh, <laughs> they, they, I think they have. I don't think that they've seen it. <laughs> I've so that's coming from Marulon, right? I've heard the Cottonwood Mutual Water Company board approved it, but then wouldn't authorize their manager to sign it. So I don't know if they have it or not. That's interesting. So okay. it's the eternal tap dance. Right? <laughs> oh, it's silly. Water, that's a I, weird I think that project, as well Very as others, do show that economic development has progressed in the county. Economic development is a very slow process, and I think. In the public side, a lot of people expect it to happen overnight. It just doesn't. That's just not the way it works. So I appreciate the work that has been done by you, by the board, John. That that you are you still chairing the board? Yes. Yeah. Okay. You tried to quit. <laughs> the board that you chair. I, that work has has made a difference, and I know sometimes we may look at it, especially when we're looking up close to it, and not realize that things have occurred and have happened. But when you step back and look at it, there's been a lot of things happen over the last few years, economic development-wise, from the hotel to this new lease to a lot of other projects. So, I mean, the I... The interchange. I, yeah, the interchange. It, I commend you and, and all those who have worked on it from, from here as well for the work. I think that's... A lot has been done, and we should recognize that. Do you know, if Le Lee's is an associated food... I don't know if affiliate's the right word. You loosely stated affiliate. Um, do you know, do they need to give a sign off on the construction of this store or, well, and if they do, uh, well, if they've already in, given it? <laughs> they're in discussions with, I think we is borrowing money from associated with this. Hmm. So they're, that's going to be their thought in the game. Okay. So, and I, being careful about what we speak about, the RDA is a linchpin component yes. of moving this project forward because there's not the population in Mount Green and in Peterson doesn't reflect a sustainable initial business model for this project. And so there's some there's some growth expect expectations and some usage expectations into the future to make the lease project make sense. And the RDA, PID, I'm not sure what will be presented. Overlay is a component to move this forward. The viability of it long term is, is easily viable, especially once the interchange is done. But that initial component to get it built, if we want to get it built in the timeline that we're looking at, there's these, these little benchmarks we have to get up to, including the, uh, the, the financing of this. Do you know what their housing unit? requirement is typically? I don't off the top of my head. It was in that Lewis Burning Yeah. I mean, we, what it was. And it may have changed a little bit because yeah. I mean to Josh's point, I think that that their initial plan has changed a little bit, right? They initially had a top golf in there and that top golf got built somewhere in Davis County or St. George, I can't remember. And so now they added a different component to it. So um, I can find that information, but I haven't checked on the newest numbers. Well, it would just be interesting. I, I People sometimes scoff at the need for the number of units to support a store like that, but where we moved from in South Jordan, I can go to two separate locations and point to grocery stores that were built in areas right off the Bangor Highway. <laughs> And in the middle of, I mean, which means they're within a mile of daybreak. And both of them opened and then closed. Really? Yeah. And, you know, one was an Albertsons, 
and one was um, one of the smaller Walmart grocery stores that are neighborhood model. Wow. And both of them are closed. You know, the Albertsons has been repurposed for other uses. That neighborhood Walmart's still just a show. Empty. And so, you know, people can say, well, they can just survive. And it's like, no, they can't. <laughs> Not e If somebody's willing to subsidize it, you know, for the long-term play, they can. But those are two stores supported by massive organizations that opened and then closed. You know, by the same token, down on Redwood Road, they opened Harmons and they did another one at 114 while I was there, and those have been really successful. So maybe it's the operation, but anyway, it's... Well, I think just the fact, Bobby, that they're moving this RDA thing forward with big volumes and help stimulate that discussion. Down. Well, and okay. this is my last one. <laughs> I, I think that we have to recognize that there's a reputation that Morgan has had in the past that made it difficult for developers to build. And that reputation, with Josh now on board, moving forward with maybe RDA opportunities, will start to diminish and we can create processes and procedures and, and land use code that, that will allow us to be a more development friendly community under the parameters of what makes sense for the county, which is always the number one, right, to keep the community that, that, that Morgan is. Um, but I think the RDA and some of these other things really start um, sending a good positive message um, to the development community that, that this is a community that wants good development and will um, work with good developers, but still has good strong growth. That's all I got. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. We appreciate it. Okay, Julie. We left you lots of time for this. Sorry, Julie. Oh, it's, it's really no big deal. I you got two minutes. This, no, this should be fair. <laughs> I mean, I pretty much told you what I needed to tell you on the paper, but um, Garrett wanted to share some information about the last one. And so I do want you to know that I ended up um, getting a phone call from Lyletta, and she wanted to turn over all of the paperwork and everything that they had done for so many years. So I let her bring that to my office. And then, I don't know if Matt guides me on that. If Matt, are you still over? I'm sorry, Commissioner Wilson, are you still over um, Parks? Yes. I yes. Top of my head. yes. So I just thought I'd you know, get guidance on what to do with the, all of the stuff. And then um, I have just this little bit, three pages of the 25 she gave me. Um, for each of you, and then I'll give Matt everything else. And she put her reasons for possible dismantling of the board. Um, but then in this letter that she actually brought yesterday, no, this morning, it, maybe they'll stay together if um, you know you guys want them to. I don't know. We'll kind of have to see where it goes. But I want to get right back right enough. Yeah, yeah. So, and Garrett looked up all of the statutes and stuff that go with it. And, so why did they want to get rid of the board? Um, the board has not met since, is it May of 2019? And they feel like they don't know what to do at this point. And they've, there's three pages there. One of them shows you what our unfinished park business that they feel is unfinished. So, you know, she basically is saying that unless you want them to stay together, there may be a few that would stay on the board. But they just don't know what their purpose is anymore, I guess. And so, but I didn't know what to do because nobody's guided me on this when I get a phone call like that. So I just decided to gather the stuff up, bring you what she wanted you to know, and then let maybe Matt take it over and, and Garrett advise. And I, I didn't know how to handle it, but I, she came in and met with me and just brought me all of their stuff and all of the tapes from the years of their meetings and... Hmm. Did you know there was a park board? I would think if they had a, had been <laughs> dedicated to I mean, the parks, they would have met more often than never. Mm -hmm. So, they used to meet often. I did pull up our, our code, and I can, if you want, I can either scan the one I've marked up or just send you a link. Okay. But in 
2-3-1, it specifically talks about the Parks Board, and um, it, it does say that they're supposed to meet no less than four times during a calendar year, so kind of once a quarter, but it does say that a county council member and or facilities manager must be in attendance at all board meetings or the meeting will be canceled. And so even though the commission member and facilities manager, which I guess would be Brett, and, and we're not sure if he's attended these meetings in the past or not, even though they don't have a vote, they are required to be present to hold a meeting. And so it might just be a matter of pulling the board together and seeing if they want to, you know, continue forward having a meeting. And it does say that there should be 8 to 15 members. So it looks like their last meeting was before we even yes. were voted in. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The May before. <laughs> we were yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then, and then, then, COVID, came, and then COVID hit. Yeah. Um, so... I can see why they would be disgruntled other than it says that I've reached out to Morgan County numerous attempts to inquire but no response. Who who have they reached out to, I'm wondering? I think the third letter there shows that she might have reached out to you once, but I don't know. By? Maybe it's March 2021. And then um, she did call and talk to Garrett. He returned a call and had a... Oh, so this is the letter to me? Almost two years ago. I don't know that she continually tried, but... Well, I'm just wondering if this was supposedly sent email or... No, I, she said it was email. Okay. Or well, put in your box. <laughs> it says Twice. It says at the bottom. Oh, oh yeah. I thought she said left in his box twice. Yeah. Do you have a box? Do I have a box? You yes. have, it's you that do. little tray of stuff. Tray. You get every time. I, I learned, it's in I the agree. clerk's office if you ever want to. I learned that. <laughs> you didn't know that? Do you, do you take it from the clerk's office and put them in here? Yeah. Oh, okay. And I, I did speak with her on the phone. She had left, I think she had come in um, and talked to Kim when I wasn't in the office. So I called her back. And I need to be better at keeping notes of the phone call. I don't recall exactly where that phone call was left, but I did speak with her, and I think she was saying, you know, what what do we do? You know, as far as as that goes. Um, so anyway, I, I do know I talked with her, but well, I'll I can, I will I can reach out to her to and I will. I'll send a copy of this to everyone, and maybe Matt or Commissioner oh, yeah. Wilson, you can forward this and say, this is what you do. You know, here's the portion of the code that applies to the board. Sounds like we've probably got some open positions that need to be filled as well. Well, we probably ought to advertise for that. And and I, I know it's past five, but I guess the thoughts I have is we have all these parks, and it looks like there's a lot of volunteering. There's some parks with no water. I guess a long-term thought process is what are we going to do to maintain and operate these parks correctly? Because it doesn't sound like we are fully. So it's just my thoughts. I can agree. Mm -hmm. And there's going to be more parks too. Yeah. A lot more parks. Yeah. Yeah. And the more things we have to man ma manage and maintain and so forth. So it needs to be in our discussion um, and I feel like we should keep the board just maybe new member more members or new members yeah because I the only person that's talked to me off this board is Trina Wilkinson and she and I have discussed things but and see so she's a she's with the fair board right no she was, she was she's over the park. Croydon Park Croydon. she was library board for years and then she okay Matt would you like all right. I go by like, map. <laughs> I don't know what's the um, Should I keep the box and stuff in my? I've got, I've got space for it. If you want, you just keep just the box that she 
turned over to me, and then if you get a new board together, they could go through it if they want. Yeah. So they could just keep it in the Okay. 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 It's like 10 sales, no? Yes, it is. Yes. Yeah. It was on starter line. Okay. We are going to begin. We just completed a work session discussing economic development, some HR items, um, and County Parks Board. We will begin our official meeting. It is uh, a few minutes after 5, January 17th, 2023. All members of the Commission are present. We will begin with an invocation or moment of reflection and pledge of allegiance, and I've asked Commissioner McConnell to offer that. Father in heaven, we're grateful at this time for the opportunity that we have to meet together as a county commission, and we're grateful for those men, uh, members of our community that have joined us this evening. We're grateful, Father, for the blessings of freedom in our country and the opportunity to meet together, discuss the needs and um, desires of the county and its residents. And we pray that as we meet together that we might um, enjoy our time together, that we might speak civilly with one another. and and enjoy the blessings of thy spirit. And we pray for these things in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you very much, Commissioner McConnell. Uh, we will move to our consent items. There's just one item, that is the review and approval of the January 3rd, 2023 meeting minutes. Are there any adjustments to the minutes that have not yet been provided to Julie? Uh, I've got a couple. Perfect. So when we're on item B, consent items, where it just says Commissioner Fackrell moved to approve you have a D on the end of approved, and you can just strike that. And then in item E, 1, Romanette 3, there were 86 people were hired. So it should be 86 people were hired, or there were 86 people hired. Just got two words in there. Um, item F1, when it talks about the county standard lease agreement, that should just be a possessive, C-O-U-N-T-Y apostrophe S as opposed to plural. That's all I have. Any other items from the agenda? Just one more. Let's keep trying the meeting minutes. minutes. Oh, there should be one more. I did receive from attorney Smith. Can't find it now. Sorry. Oh, there it was. There. Okay. Under commissioner comments, there are requests coming in for us to be a supporter of the astro tourism. Requests from. There are requests from the state and other organizations. State Office of Tourism. For us to be a supporter of the Astro Tourism's support of Dark Skies. Okay, great. With that, we'll look for a motion to approve the January 3rd, 2023 meeting minutes as amended. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Uh, we will move to Commissioner's Declaration of Conflict of Interest. Are there any conflicts with any items on this evening's agenda? Nope. Um, well, let me, so I do represent clients that own property adjacent to the M&D Nelson rezone property. Um, I don't know that that will matter, but just... Yeah, but I got friends living next to him too, so. <laughs> <laughs> I got friends throughout this whole county. Okay, thank you. All right, we will move to our public comment period. 
this is an opportunity for the public to address the commission on any agenda items. Um, we do have one public hearing, that is item G, as mentioned earlier, the um, M&D Nelson rezone. So there will be an opportunity for the public to address us at that point regarding that item. All other items, if you'd like to address the commission, please come forward at this time. Okay, seeing none, we will move. Uh, item E, which is a presentation, Commissioner Anderson, um, apparently the information was not provided in time um, to, to get that. Yeah, I was very excited about this. We have to have it in two weeks so that you guys can add your votes to the bills that are coming before the this this session. But I, in order to get, you log in and then they give you a, they, they send you back to say, hey, you, you're in and, and then you can move forward. And I haven't got that. I've talked to you it, twice. So It actually came out today. What's that? I saw it today. Yeah, I haven't seen mine yet. So, so anyways, okay. we will put it in, we'll move that to two weeks. The main thought process is it's a portal where you can look at the bills that are being ran through the UAC, and then you'll actually have the opportunity to vote on those bills on, on what, whether you want to see them move through or not. That's awesome. I yeah. think that's great. It cool. shows UAC's really trying to understand the needs of their... I don't know if you call it constituents. They're uh, yes, <laughs> but Julie, if you want members, to just put that members, in thank you. Members. That'd be great. Thank you. There's one more thing with that. Um, in reality, the you can go in now. Um, you can go into the UX site, and I could probably put it up there if you want me to show You're it. You're saying to look at the bills themselves. To look at well, the bills. And then you can have the Yeah, that's exactly what button. I was going to show them. So. Yeah. Well, if you'd like, we can do it. Well, I'm not on. If you're on and you want to show them and you're ready, well, I don't. Get the controls for me and I can maybe do it here. Wait for one second. It does make me a little bit nervous when you're driving, Blaine, but it's always exciting. <laughs> you know, I do this down the road as I'm driving, you know. Hey. Um, this was something they had last year, but it did not work as well. Yeah, it wasn't the same. And so this year it was. Let me just oh. go to UAC. Or you guys can do it on your own. I learned how to first work this thing. Can you turn to something to get the project? I don't think you, Jeremy. I, 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 hope, I, see that. Um, I hope not. Oh, yeah, you do need to okay. go in and put your information you know, in, and then they'll send you back and you'll see it. Yeah, okay. Bueno. Yeah, I just haven't received it yet. Let's so. see. You back. Or. in here. Come down. Right there. Commission room. Okay. There we are. We're on it. Yeah, you're right. I might show you the woolly woolly worm or whatever it's called. <laughs> he died the next day by Close the way. all your NFL football apps <laughs> so we can handle okay. yeah. what's on that. Yeah. 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 Okay. Thank you. So this is where we go to, the Utah Association of Counties, and then you go to Legislative Advocacy, and right here, the UAC Legislative Bill Tracker, or you can go into any of the others, but this one is the one we're on, and then you just type in your information. Well, sorry, Blaine, right there at the bottom, if you're going in for the first time, you'll oh, need yeah, to register. You go to new so that's the point I got to, and I haven't received a you're good to go yet. So. Okay. Yeah, you need so to go through the register process. Let me put it in here. I've got mine. But I can't type fast, so. It's not easy on that little keyboard either. <laughs> no, it's not. Okay, and then my password. You gotta remember this one. You don't have to do that if you use the same one every time, like me. 
I can't remember he what else he's going to do. He's well, back. <laughs> <laughs> I might have to. Yes, one tack away. <laughs> I have to go to my strategic plan here and find my three. Not to cycle through. Because if it doesn't work, I'll go to the next one until it works. Yeah, I locked myself out of my own iPad the other day. Is it woolly worm? Woolly worm. <laughs> it's dead woolly worm. <laughs> yes, it is dead. It got too cold. Uh oh, it died, huh? You were supposed to keep that thing alive for the winter. Well, for some reason it, it didn't should work. Have been at so anyway, this is where you're going to need to go to, okay. and you go in here, and it will give you the different uh, different uh, bills that are happening. And uh, so this is as far as you're going to get us. And then there will be a <laughs> well because my well. So this is why I postponed it because I couldn't go further than this. <laughs> I am looking at my passwords, and for some reason, it did not. Oh, that's why. <laughs> Hang on. If you click on that thing at the very bottom, will it drop it in there for you? Yep, it would. Thank you. There you go. Oh, well, maybe not. <laughs> Let's just do... Well, in here it shows me that that is my username. Okay, let's see if it does it. Still won't. So okay, I let's guess just, yeah, let's, let's just go ahead. on. But <laughs> that is how you've got to register for it. I can tell you what the issue is. What? You need your full email address. Right? You could click on the bottom right there. Well, it didn't come up. Well, either way, we can get we'll get logged in, all of us, and then we can look at that. And if you yeah, want to. Okay. At yeah. the next meeting, talk a little more about it. Make sure. Yeah, we can talk about each of the bills, but you know, we'll give you the ability at nights because none of you are. Josh, we were just to on the verge, and bills. you bring us so. back. <laughs> yeah. so, I'm trying to postpone my eyes. <laughs> That's all right. I just don't know what happened, but the no, other day it came up for me, so it wasn't a problem. So, no. been reset. so <laughs> I've been reset. And, uh, Maybe they didn't like the way you were voting. So you, so you are you were just informing us of this. There's not. I was just informing you of it because where? I asked the question because it was a, a UAC board meeting, and I asked the questions. Can all the commissioners hey, vote? There we and go. Said yes. Turn so. out the lights. Okay. Okay. So. <laughs> so for instance, here's one on the revenue and taxation. You can go into that. We can see what happens or what's happening. These are the provisions of that. Um, this is what they're trying to propose currently. And then let's just say for instance, we want to approve it or not approve it. We can go down here at the very bottom and it will, we can either support or whatever, then we submit the vote. And then it will come up with all of our voter voting, who has voted. Well, now it won't come down. There we go. And there's actually a way to see who it is that supports it and who's not. So that way, if you have a question, you can actually call them and say they opposed it or I opposed it. You can call that person and talk to them and say, what was your reasons for not voting for it? I mean, you were one of three or one of 10. And uh, um, this way it allows the rest of the USAC a uh, Utah Association of Counties, uh, anyway, for the commissioners to be able to see what bills are happening and that we can vote on them, we can call, we can get some help, we can find out their reasonings for what reasons we don't want something. And uh, anyway, that's all it is. So and I'd recommend you reading the bill because the highlighted yes. provisions is an uh, opinion of one person yes. of that bill. And so, so yeah, and you, if you want to update it, you can update it at any time. After you've gone through and read it, you can oppose it, yeah. and you, it changes your vote. And okay. then you just hit the update, and it's all there. So now the vote is all against because I'm the only one that voted on it. 
So that is a good feature that we've, they are given to us now. And you can also look up any kind of, um, say we've got the Urban Farm Assessing, uh, Farming Assessment Act, which is coming up. And these are some different things that they want us as commissioners to decide whether or not it allows us as a county to limit what kinds of urban farming we will allow. Um, they still have to adhere to all the other farming assessment acts, but this is a position that we can take or not take. And so you can look up all of them, and there are some other things that uh, Jared... Yeah, do you want to go back one more, Blaine? Okay. So each of these policy areas, they each have, they have steering committees for each of them. There's hundreds of bills, but these steering committees are basically trying to say, okay, here's the certain bills that are going to affect counties. That's what I was going to ask. Is this a narrowed down list yes. of the legislative enactments? Yes. It's not yes. everything. Yeah, okay. it's not everything unless you wanted to go. I mean, these are all track bills, but if you want to see all bills, I don't know exactly how I do that, but uh, I don't want to see all bills. Okay. <laughs> but anyway, if you wanted to, you can actually find it in here, and they will actually have that. Plus, you can go to the website of the <coughs> code at le.utah.gov, and you can actually find everything in there. And then you can have, you can get every time there's an update, you can click on a certain item, a certain part on the right hand side that says, I want an update on this bill every time something happens. Yeah. And then and it's following it, you. If any of you are really excited about this and want to be on steering committees, just uh, contact UAC, Zeke, and he'll, he'll get you on the committees. So, okay. okay. Thank, thank you. you. So now you thank, don't have to have it in boy, two weeks. Unless yeah, you're thank you. Never mind, Julie. <laughs> it will not be on next <laughs> meetings. Nope. Nope. Okay. I just feel like I waste the time. <laughs> Let's move to our action items. Uh, action yeah, item number one is um, selecting an appointee to the UAC Board of Directors. Uh, we, we currently have a UAC Board of Directors appointee, and that's Commissioner Anderson. We didn't change that as part of his portfolio assignment, but UAC is asking that we reaffirm um, if, if he's going to continue. One thing they did ask, I've got to get to my text messages. And uh, and I'm okay with you doing it, continuing. Um, he basically says he wants, um, says they want the person that will be most active and supportive of you. Commissioner Anderson, do you I'm still good. want to? Yes, yep. I do. I'll yep. make a motion that we appoint Commissioner Anderson to serve as the appointee to the UAC Board of Directors. I'll second it. Motion and a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Okay, motion passes. Congratulations. <laughs> Josh, Planning Department. Request subdivision concept plan amendment of phase one resulting in 14. Oh, sorry, this is for uh, short field landings concept plan. Thanks. Uh, this is for application number 22.041, short field landing concept plan. Um, in July, on July 14th of last year, the Planning Commission uh, recommended approval. And then on August 2nd, this uh, concept plan was presented to the County Commission. The County Commission approved it. Uh, due to some issues with the site plan portion of it, uh, with regards to setbacks, um, the location of the buildings um, were going to have to change. And so uh, Blair Gardner, who is the applicant, um, is requesting an amendment to this uh, while he goes through site plan review. And then in the future, uh, when the location of the buildings are set, he may or may not bring it back for additional uh, kind of unionization of, of the units. Uh, with that said, uh, this amendment uh, would approve uh, the removal of 14 units from the phase two portion and leave the single combination lot as well as the 14 units from phase one. Staff is recommending approval, um, and then if you have any questions, I can answer those now. Uh, the applicant is also in the audience. I have a question. Okay. This, where this is showing that it is occurring on the site, on the site area, um, isn't there construction already being done there? Yeah, phase one is currently under construction. 
Okay, so where is where are these going to go? Because right in the first in the front portion, and I can show it on here again if you want. The, the three buildings that are shown are the three buildings under construction. Correct. The, yeah. Over to the east, sorry, to the west, they're removing units that used to be shown there. Right. The building that's currently shown on the west side of this is an existing building that is not going to be removed for, uh, for now. And part of the concept plan requirement is to show existing Keep going down. Existing buildings. Okay. Anywhere. So the new ones are what we're seeing on the right side of the drawing right and existing on the left. The right this side is the main road, one, right? And these are the ones being built. This is caught. Oh, okay, we're not changing those ones. Right. We're talking about this, this drill. This right. Off right here. So, but they're building right here. Gotcha. On right phase two. Yeah, these are, these are, I mean, these are erected. Right. And yeah. so what yeah, is yeah. there, okay, is there what are they asking for? You, the site plan used to show. So does a change like this on a concept plan right? always come before us? Uh, sure. 5, I 10, 15, be, there were uh, another. It's important to show exactly what's 15, going to be going there uh, because of the issues with the site plan. Uh, maybe this wasn't the correct course of action. I have a concern uh, that was brought up to me by the airport manager. These buildings that were, are being constructed currently, nothing about this part, but that is part of the whole thing. He says that the flight height doesn't seem to be right. Um, the concern was brought up about four months ago um, prior to their, I, I don't remember the exact date, but I did talk to the airport manager and I believe they went off measure. Um, Blair Gardner might be able to respond to that a little bit better than me, but my understanding is that the current buildings meet the minimum height requirements. Because it, it seemed to me when I talked to him a few months ago is that it, if it did meet it, um, and it could, but it's just a safety issue that could happen of an airplane not making it. That's correct. However, the airport, uh, the runway protection zone is not a flat protection zone. Right. It's a it height. increases in size right. every so many feet. Um, I believe it's, I don't want to speak because I don't remember exactly, but it's defined in our code. So every so many feet, Seven the feet. runway protection goes, it goes up a foot. Right. Um, out to the end of the airport runway protection zone. So anything underneath that, how do you address that, it's a single story product, right? Right. Yes. But the thing that they were concerned about was it looked like there had been additional put on top of what the main part was. Right. It's so maybe a roof. I don't know well, what before it was. Part of the parapet. Continues, that's really not part of this amendment because those buildings are already under construction. They received building permits. The height was checked at the time the building permits were issued. Uh, as far as staff is concerned, those building heights met minimum code requirements, which is why the building permits were issued. The issue that I have with phase one is that it didn't go through site plan review, which is why phase two is going through site plan review, and it didn't meet minimum code requirements for site plan review, which is why he's going through site plan review. Phase okay. one is already under construction, so as far as I'm concerned, it's non-conforming. Oh, okay. So well, what, you but address what did we approve previously then, if it wasn't a site plan? No, you approved of subdivision plat or yeah. condo plat. Yeah. Therein lies the problem. It's the same issue we had with CW lands. That is correct. Okay. Okay. Any, any questions? No. Nope. When when were the initial building permits approved? It's before uh, they were approved. approved before I was even here. Was it before October of 2020? Yes, because we weren't here. Yeah, the the code says. No, I think no. It was after 2020. Was it? Yeah, yeah, yeah we so just barely looked at this like last year. It was last year. Yeah. So the building permits for phase one were issued either right when I got here or right before I got here. 
It was, yeah, it was, it was, it was before when Lance was vacated. It was already proven that building permits were issued. We were actually in, in construction at that point before I think Josh came about. Was there a conditional use permit for this? Yeah, and that was approved as well. Yeah, it does say building restrictions within runway protection zones. No structure shall be erected within either the runway protection zone additional to those already in place unless on the effective date hereof either the erection of such structure had been previously approved or upon lots within the Cottonwood Commercial Park as approved by conditional use permit in conformance with this title. So well, I think we did approve it. And I think at the time, the airport advisory board had recommended approval. I think the only issue, if I'm understanding you correctly, is that there, there's a base building height, and then you might have a parapet that's a little taller or something. Yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, Joe's measurement yeah. was eyeballing. Yeah. So we actually had to go through the FAA in terms of the guidelines for building height based upon elevation to, to peak height. So if you notice our northeast buildings are lower, and then they taper up, as Josh mentioned, and all of our buildings conform or uh, equal to or less than what the FAA guideline requirement is. In fact, the elevations themselves are equal to or less than the, the current buildings that are, are surrounding us. Okay. So, so to answer your question, we actually had to submit that to the FAA three or four weeks ago. Because okay. basically it's within, once it's finally constructed, does it comply, which we verified it does. Okay. Okay. I don't have an objection to the modification to the, the plan, but characterizing them as condominium units until you record a condominium plat and a declaration of condominium, just so that everybody understands you haven't created any units until you do that. <laughs> So right now you've got, unless you've recorded a condominium plat. No, so there's two caveats here. One is there's two pieces of property that we're eliminating the center property line mm -hmm. and combining them into one. So, the next so now, element is the condominiumization. That once they're fully constructed and we can do a certificate of occupancy, at that point they will be recorded as individual tax IDs. And which will allow us to sell them as individual units. Okay. So if there's a cart before the horse or heart, you know, however you want that done, I'm happy to comply. And my understanding is it has to go through the preliminary and final plat process in order to do that. But I think that's probably correct under our code. You'll have to process the plat for approval. Which is why I wanted to amend the concept plan so we know exactly what's going on in the final plat. Yeah. Yeah. So. I, I'm just wanting to make sure everybody understands that in the process, that no one's going to go out and try to sell units until they record the plat. Oh, yeah, I can't. Okay, yeah, yeah. all right. Because I don't have a tax ID to sell. I've got, uh, assuming everything okay. goes well tonight, I'll have yep. one tax ID for both properties. Right. I can't minimize, then they'll get the individual tax ID numbers. And the subdivision approval process from, like, what's the yeah. preliminary and final plat process? Right, right, right. The, the, the commercial sub, that's what the commercial subdivision approval process is understood that, that I need to go through that process now to get this phase. Okay. Awesome. I'd like, like to make a motion, Chair, if there's no other yes, questions. Yes, absolutely. Make a motion to approve the amendment to the short field landings concept plan, application number 22.041, removing 14. Um, non platted condominium units <laughs> and allowing for 14 for a 14 unit commercial subdivision of land and a combination of two parcels into a single lot located at approximately 4032 west 5800 north based on the findings and with the conditions listed in the staff report dated january 17th 2023 i'll second it the motion a second all those in favor aye aye, aye. aye. any opposed <coughs> motion passes thank you Okay, we'll move to item number three. <coughs> Josh, this is a discussion decision. Approval of Rose Hill Subdivision Phase 4 Plot Amendment number one. Thank you. Uh, application number 22.064, uh, the Rose Hill Phase 4 Plot Amendment. Uh, we were waiting for uh, will serve with water 
for this property before we bring it forward to you. It seemed like they would have it. Um, however, last week after this had gone out, uh, he mentioned that he was not going to uh, get it at least for another couple weeks. So um, he requested that we <coughs> continued. Um, I'm requesting that maybe we give them about four more weeks to get that Wilson letter um, and then continue it to your second meeting in February. Okay. Any concern with that? Would be good? No, I'm fine. Okay, we will, um, I guess, look for a motion to continue this to our February 21st. Uh, 21st. February 21st meeting. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion to continue the Rose Hill Phase 4 Plat Amendment application 22.064 until our meeting in February on February 21st. Second. A motion a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Commissioner Fackrell, discussion on the fairgrounds problem. Okay. Uh, Jordan and I have been in discussions um, with, well, we've got the fair, the fair board extension plan. You guys should have all received something similar to this. This is an older version. Uh, there's been an overlay of where we would like to put the bike park and everything. It's never really been adopted by us yet, and I'm not asking for it to be adopted. What I'm asking for is that we discuss what do we really want out there now that we've got this information from the Wasatch Civil because we've got the opportunity to have different grants that are available and Lydia, our sports recreation person, director, has would like to go and put in some grants. My only, and I sent you guys the email on that, but my questions were is there needs to be a full vision of what we're going to apply for before we, I mean, I'd like to get the grants to do some of this stuff, but there needs to be a plan. And if we don't have that plan, and I don't want to stop the process because we do need those grants this year. I do want to get them. But I want us to determine what we want there before we go and submit the grant. Um, there are, and I sent to each one of you, I think I did, maybe I didn't. If not, I sent to Jared uh, a lot of these different recreational trails programs. There's about... Well, I can go through a couple of them. The Utah Outdoor Recreation Grant Tier 1, that's the one that we have already received. We receive that every year. Then there's the uh, Tier 2, which we've applied for. It used to be called Part B, the Rural, Oper uh, Rural, Rural, Oper Rural Economic Grant Part B is what we have received, and we received that for the Dome Project. So we received $100,000 for that dome project up at East Canyon Reservoir. This was a year and a half ago. And we need to expend the, well, we need to finish the project by June 30th this year, which is on, hopefully on task for it. Uh, both the Tourism Department and the Economic Development Department are already working on that. And uh, we should have it constructed and completed by then. And uh, then there's the mini grant for smaller projects. There is the outdoor classroom grant. There's the recreation restoration in infrastructure grant. And those are the ones that we will be able to use to repair and replace some of our trails. Okay? That's some of the areas. And um, then they also, they also have some water grants. There are some... Um, anyway, there's a, there's a lot of grants that are available. I have a few. Here's this one, this one, this one, and a lot more inside here. So, if you're interested in doing any of these, we just need to have a plan of what we want to accomplish before we apply for the grants. And that's my only reason for bringing it up, is we don't know, we have not discussed what we want to have accomplished at the fairgrounds and our county property. And so my big thing is I want to make sure that we have the agriculture area in place. 
I want us to be able to keep our fairgrounds. I want to be able to, I mean, there's plans in here for an event center that we can eventually have. Um, I think it would be a wonderful thing for our county to have one because we have nothing. And uh, so anyway, I just wanted to discuss it and get your thoughts on what, what is, what do you want to have accomplished so that way Jared can go ahead and, and talk to this grant writer that he's got writing for us. Um, well, personally, I think it's more like a work session than it would be to, to I, I'd like to have a little more time than just what we have tonight to, to think of there's, what we want to do there. Yeah, I'm, there's only I'm, I'm, I'm very surprised that we have pickleball courts and a tennis court without any kind of plan. Yeah. I'm extremely surprised. Mm -hmm. Where was the plan? Where was the thought? Where was the parking? Why did the restroom come in like it was? So with that said, it was accomplished. It was done. And it's being used, which I think is phenomenal. Um, a plan like this, I think, will take months right. um, to get to a place where we feel comfortable. Um, the two main funding opportunities that we have, it's once a year. Um, are in two months. So the thought process was to say, what what can we do, realizing that this is going to take time? Is there anything we can do? If the answer is there's nothing we can do, let's let's not let's not put time and effort into these grants this year. Let's wait till next year. Um, so I, even, I even think if we haven't finalized the plan. Couldn't this be submitted as the potential? Or proposed plan 100%. with these grant projects, hundred percent. Yes, and then we could we could always say, well, yeah, we wanted funding for a a trail, but instead of the trail going this way, it's going to go it that shift, way. Shift it here, moved here. I mean, hundred percent. And I think that's why we wanted this initial plan so we could submit for funding. Right. Um, I know the other concern was um, what the matching dollars are, and I, I I wrote an email to you guys today, but I really think um, my suggestion would be. Um, we need to apply to see if they'll even give us dollars. If they don't give us dollars and it doesn't work for us, then we don't need to worry about matching. Um, if they do say, hey, you guys, we're, we're going to give you some monies, here's the matching and what it looks like, I think we can then say, okay, can we do this? Um, can we create in-kind? What do we need to do to match? And I think at that point in time we could say no also. If we can't come up with the dollars to match, then, then we don't accept that grant. But. The, the concern I have is if we don't move on grants like these on a yearly basis, um, other other um, groups are going to get the dollars, and we're going to be sitting without getting any dollars and, and not moving forward to a degree. So. There's, uh, all of these grants have a different timeline. The one that Lydia wants to apply for is February 1st through April 28th. Okay, so it's not a short time, but we do need to go through it and is there a re other so, than the time it takes to do it is there a reason why we wouldn't apply as long as we're working towards this yeah and yes it, and that's what i was telling Blaine is i think some of the main items that might rise a little bit higher and it depends on the funding source yeah. but but the funding source that we are looking at and if you read through um what what she's looking at the the trail mm -hmm. um skate bike park and in fields, you, you combine those things together, and it just looks really good to these to the, to the funding group that gives us the dollars, and and they they've awarded a lot of dollars when those things are included. So I don't want to do it for one item. Yeah. I don't think it would be smart to say, hey, let's let's put some dollars towards an event complex, and we have no idea what that looks like yet. Right. But I think the city's already has they already have monies to extend that trail. They're starting the bridge this year. Mm -hmm. Trail's going to go over the bridge, and it's going to come across in back of the bus area and stop at the city boundary yeah. so it's kind of a no-brainer initially anyways trail 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 we can wrap right. that around the back of the fairgrounds over towards the pickleball courts that's a absolute no-brainer that we can add to the trail so there, there's things like that i think we can say hey let's take a first stab at these dollars this year and, and see what we come up with yeah and so each one of these different ones um like for instance the outdoor recreation planning assistance you know we don't need that one but the the one that the l l c w let's see l w c f uh program or the one there is the one that we need to do in combination with a trails which is under the recreational trails program and so we've got different ones that we could do and could combine these things 
and make it to where we have, I mean, we're going to be applying for different grants, but it's part of the whole picture is what I'm trying to say, and that's the only reason why I wanted to bring it up, is that these things need to be started on so that we have them into them by about the 20th of February, 28th of February, so that way they can give us a preliminary example whether or not we've got a chance of getting it or what we need to refine to make sure we can get it. They range in matches of anywhere from 20% to 50%, and it also depends on you can use one of the grants to help with the another grant, <laughs> which is kind of interesting. Is <laughs> Some so of them are from the federal so government. So Lydia was applying for these grants. She was applying apply for two of them. To what project? Well, that's why when she initially said, I'm applying, Blaine and I said, okay, hold on. We need to make sure that what you're applying for would work for this year. Yeah. Um, like so I said, if we were going to do an extension of the trail, and if I mm -hmm. understood what you're saying, you're saying the city's bringing a trail to right here? Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we could carry, just do a trail around the perimeter of the county property for some distance utilizing these grant funds would that yes. be an appropriate use? That would be an yes. appropriate use. But there's things that we need to discuss if we're going to do that. Like, for example, if you put a trail through the back of the fairgrounds, yeah. we've got to fence that trail off or do That's something right. because to we can't have people, people from getting walking through the, the fairgrounds constantly. That's right. We, we try to secure that facility from time to time, at least for certain things. It's right. not ultra, ultra secure, but so there's, there are things that we need to talk about and figure out. But I'm not opposed to applying for the grants. I do think if, if there's something that's, that's a definite no, we shouldn't apply for the grant because sure. it doesn't look good to apply for yep. it and then turn it down. Yep. Right. You know? But because then I mean, a lot of these things more. that you're talking about, I don't, I don't see those as a definite no. Right. And maybe what would be really helpful is if we could get a list of the grant opportunities all in one list, the funding amounts, the match amounts, and then prioritize based on the project, right? Did you read my email? I did read that's your exactly email. what I said, so mm -hmm. no, we're we're thinking the same. I, I think I think and that's what we need to make a good decision. Agree completely. We need to understand all of that. Yeah. Because obviously if somebody were to say let's go after all the grants, that wouldn't be prudent. Right. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Well and, and what's the biggest bang for our buck on these? You know, if if yes. even if it is a twenty five percent match versus a 50% match isn't really what we want anyway, you know, and is that the first thing we should lead with or not? I, I don't know. But anyway. And then your fencing question is an interesting one because if you develop it the way this is laid out, from my perspective, your event complex would be locked. I don't know what you do with your rodeo grounds, but if you're doing these kinds of facilities, I would expect that they're going to be open. Yeah, some yeah, of them no. will, and that's that's the thing we got to decide because our current fairgrounds is not designed well for. In fact, there's a road there right now right. through part of that, which would also be an issue, potentially because the buildings are so close to the river. So anyway, there, there's there's pieces we'd have to figure out. That doesn't mean we couldn't put trails through there. We just need to figure out the best way to do it, and you know. I think okay. it's a no-brainer to extend that trail eventually, and that, connect to the city trail and go clear up around. Eventually that would be an amazing tubers paradise where you can right. get in the river and float down and get back out. We could have food vendors. I mean, I've talked about this in the past, but I think part of our plan ought to include some pads where a food vendor could come and set up and sell stuff, you know, or a, a tubing vendor that wants to rent tubes or whatever. And like you said, Mike, this is there's a guarantee that the trail will not be like what's shown here, right? Once we get out there, once we say, hey, we got to go here, here, and here, or fencing, or whatever the case, the trail is going to move. But this gives us the ability to submit for the grant, having yeah. some kind of concept plan. Got to have a plan of some sort. Right. So, and I think we can say this is a concept plan when we submit the grant, right? So they're not, I, they can't expect it to be exactly that anyway, I'm sure. Right. So. right. The biggest, uh, there's a couple of things that we have to be aware of when we apply for this, and we're going to put in for, say, a technical, uh, we're going to put in for a soccer field, however we're going to do that soccer field, uh, and for the... Sports field. Sports fields, yeah, and for the pickleball courts, and bike park. Maybe we put them all in that way, I don't know. Um, well, and you, you and, guys and would be surprised, the bike park and skate park... Um, a lot of dollars are given to that. They, they, right. they see that as bringing a lot of um, kids out and see that as being attracted to 
a, a lot of residents. So those are pretty high on the list of a lot of these grants. Yes. So especially when we have nothing in Morgan. Exercise. It's called apparently they. It's called the health of, health of the county. And since we are number four in the nation, I'd like to keep us that way. And one way that they're looking at is okay, outdoor recreation. They want outdoor recreation to happen, mm -hmm. and whether it be by sports or by walking or whatever. Now, part of the other part of the plan is is to eventually have a white water park between the city property or somewhere down in here where we can possibly have a kayak park. And that's one thing they're looking at specifically is if somebody will come up with, and this is where we're probably going to get the most money, is to come up with a, a water trail idea. Yeah. Is a water trail like water on a trail? Or? No. It's using the river as, as the trail. trail. So in other words, we have, we have a foot trail along the river and could show, hey, there's a there's a loop here, there's parking, there's yes. restrooms, like and there's maybe a picnic area or something that they can so get, get so off that, of the. Okay, so basically, I'm sorry, what is, say that one more time? A water trail is a trail you walk through in the wa what, no, what is it? The yeah. water trail is you actually the water? no. There's two there's two different concepts of it. The water trail is one in which they use it for fishing, water sports. Um, those kinds of things. That's a water it's trail. A where's, the water. Trail? A where's the trail? It's not it's a trail. The it's a river. a river. So it's, it's a, river. a river. It's a river or a stream. It's a natural. So are river. we now going to call it the Weaver Water Trail? <laughs> I don't know, but that's what the state says. I'm kidding. Okay. Maybe, so maybe that stretch will be called that. Right? That it could be. But <laughs> what they're saying is, is those are areas that we could work on, and I would like to apply for something along that, or at least the plan to do that and to where it's feasible to be done, uh, even though we've already got it partially done, as soon as Garrett gets that, the contract signed, or get it ready to be signed uh, for the Weaver River restoration, um, uh, once we get that, then we can make further plans for this part of it. That's the water trails. They also talked about vertical trails. So quick recommendation. Um, Blaine and I have been working on this, so I think if we can continue to work on it, I agree with you, Chair, having a list of these grants and, and what the matching dollars are and what they're used for, and then maybe we can give our recommendation on that um, soon. On this plan, I've, I've talked with Josh already. We want to get this plan um, out to the public and have public input, and I'll continue to work with Josh on whether that's an open house, whether that's putting it online, but we really want public input of what they would like to see on this plan also. So. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's great. And I, I reached out to the fairgrounds board chair and the fair board chair today and sent the current plan to them and asked them to review with their boards and great. provide feedback. Um, probably be good if we had a work session to discuss this and maybe go through that a little more with, with some more time, as you mentioned. Okay. Um, and so I'll put, I'll put together list. my list of thoughts and because we did have a public all, meeting, as you know, and yeah. people showed up and expressed desires, and I think we ought to address those. Okay. Okay. So when do you want this in the work session? Next time. With Garrett. No, with the plan. Yeah, but is Garrett on the work session scheduled oh. next time? So would it be? Oh, let's I'm, let's do the time after that. Yeah. I'm not as concerned on the work session. This is going to take months to okay. refine. Right. So, so you just want to get the grants going of yeah. some of it. Yeah. Okay. And I'll get together with Blaine and we'll give a recommendation. Well, look reasonable. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Let's let's. But I just I, I just might as well start asking for money this year and, and not wait if we can. See what just, happens. Yeah. But I just wanted to make sure that we had a, a, a unity within us that we wanted to do this. And if we didn't have it, then why this do it? Why try? Problem. I just so, figured so how we spoke for you. That. River Lodge hmm? piece I just figured how we spoke for you. They offered oh. to sell to us. Anytime I speak. <laughs> awesome. Good discussion. Um, we'll have more discussion in our work session on the 21st. Anything else, Commissioner Farquhar? I just want to make sure that we're all on board with it. Before I, we I do think it. we're all on board on, on getting a plan together. Okay. For sure. A lot okay. of good ideas. I, I, there's a lot of opportunity in that area of the county, and that's exciting. Yep. Okay, Commissioner Wilson. Uh, discussion decision uh, request from Young Ford Rent Fairgrounds, July 14th through the 16th. Manager called and asked about uh, having a 
what outdoor extreme sports equipment like 200 different vendors come to our um, for that time period for those days that's three days of hotel whatever a lot of these people are going to bring trailers and things like that they can stay at Como whatever I don't know what's available there but uh, that sounds wonderful from an economic development standpoint. Yes, it does. Mm -hmm. um, we typically have a meeting sometime in January or February with the Fairgrounds Board and go through and assign dates for all the different things. Um, we can certainly approve this, but then let's just make sure when we have that meeting, you and I will go to it and we'll make sure it gets on the okay. schedule. Well, so what? Assuming um, cost, just regular cost what are, what are we going to do on that so I, I want to say the regular cost is about is 250 you, I think it's 250 I think we dollars. dropped it down I think it's 250 dollars a day okay to rent the full facility there is a, a cleaning fee that that's held until it's been released as clean but um, so something that size are they going to require any like help with public works? Like I know at public works at the rodeo, they do a lot, and I'm not sure whether that would be required here. And then we probably ought to just make a connection with the sheriff's department and the fire department to to make sure that they have. Good. I think it's it sounds like something I'd want to go to. So I'm all yeah, for it, but, cool. but I think we just need to let those parts groups know so and it'll, can it'll make preparation. If and it's, I think the if it's it is required, they the want to do it on a yearly insurance. basis. That would be great, and that would be that would be awesome. I also, when we have these kind of events and stuff, I really think we ought to. I mean, I couldn't believe some of our businesses closed down because they didn't have staff to cover during fair time, you know, when people are here looking for food and stuff like that and we have shut our doors because we can't, I think it's something we ought to pre-put out there and say, hey, look, this is coming up, be prepared, get ready. It's good for their business and it's good for our business. It seems like something we could put out through the Chamber of Commerce. Yeah. You know, maybe make them aware, hey, this event is happening in the county on this weekend. We suggest you... Well, the tourism you know, website. And the tourism, yeah. yeah. the tourism board. Okay, so I'll, yeah. I'll talk to, to him about that, the cleanup the, and all that stuff. And yeah, the, care the agreement for it is on, the, is on our website. They can go get the agreement for it, and it has the process they have to follow. They do, for an event, a large event, they do have to go through the sheriff's office and get a permit for okay. it. Okay. There are insurance requirements for the fairgrounds facility, but the fire department, fire department, yeah. contacted for the like EMS. Okay, so mainly, well, all I need to do is talk to them about public works type stuff. Yeah, well, and I mean, generally speaking, we don't provide additional support. So you know, if they need additional restrooms, they got to bring in their own outhouses and haul them out. We don't. We don't have public works there constantly attending to the facility during those types of events when they rent the facility. It's different when it's at the rodeo or something like that because it's our County. event that yeah. we're putting on. Um, I suppose if they if they you know want additional support, so trash we can talk and about things that like that. They need that to like. they need to have their own dumpsters brought well, in. Well, no, we'll have dumpsters there. We do have dumpsters there. I don't think that's an issue. Okay, we can check with Brett to see if there's a concern on that one. We keep one of those really big dumpsters at the fairgrounds, the big roll-offs. Okay. So when the bathroom gets pretty messed up, or after one day's use, it's out of the paper and all that kind of stuff, are we going to, I mean, we should be taking care of I think of the we restroom. do for multi-day events. Okay, so if this is a multi-day event. Talk, I'll talk to Brett about yeah, that, okay. what we do, and I'll tell him, this okay. is what we do. Yeah. Just okay. plan Make accordingly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Do we need a, I mean, we don't, That's an I guess we do typically vote on these when somebody does want to rent the facility and we have in the past on some of these items. We typically wait until they have their 
their uh, paperwork filled out and bring it in and show the insurance and all that stuff. Okay. I think he just wanted them to know that we that we're he, supportive. Yeah. Okay. He has our support and that we can get the dates. And I'm I'm sure we can you know arrange for the dates. To my knowledge, we'll, we'll double check, but I don't. Make sure you check with the extension office because they're the ones that they do the schedule. They do the schedule at the fairgrounds. Like and I said, we always they, have a meeting the first of the year to set the schedule. So. They okay. normally are quite full in July. Okay. Cool. All right. Look at that timing. That is beautiful. Six o'clock. Time for our six o'clock public for hearing. Our little bit of a Do break. you need a? Okay, we're gonna take a four-minute break. Oh. Good we'll Speak in three. City room yeah. a month or so ago, and I was just like, "This is nice. it's very nice, isn't it?" I think we're waiting on one more bid for that. I did see Blaine got us the info on where it's allowed, but we just need to save that one. That was a heck of a bid, though, compared to the first bid. The first yeah. bid, I was just like, "Yeah, hundred and what? Hundred thirty-six thousand dollars was the first bid." So if we can get the third bid uh, and. I'll, I'll email Jeremy this, but once we can get a third bid, that we ought to get it on the agenda. Up here, right? Yeah, yeah here, I think there. there. When have you ever listened to on a meeting? On the back, so you can. It, it, it can get staticky and skip a little, and when yeah, you, yeah, it's yeah. just it's the tough. audio would be much gives better. Gives you a screen here. You don't have to have all this. Yeah, yeah. yeah. really nice stuff. And the truth is, we probably ought to look into chairs for him, too. Yes. I know that that probably won't be covered. Yeah, we probably that, won't, but, but we maybe probably we get some people not. back. <laughs> so he's only been asking for it for five I think it's crazy. All right. We will reconvene here, and we will begin with item G, um, which is our public hearing, M&D Nelson Rezone. This is a request rezone 44.75 acres of land from A20 to Town Center. We'll go with the staff report first. Uh, the application number for this uh, project is 22.065 MD Nelson Rezoning. The project is located um, 
west of Old Highway Road and uh, Cottonwood Canyon Road intersection. The current zoning of the property is 820. Uh, the property acreage is 44.75 acres. And we are requesting a rezone the town center. The property is surrounded. Uh, future land use map. Um, on the future land use map, properties to the east, uh, to the west and north are town center. Uh, directly north, you have rural residential one acre, uh, village residential three dwelling units per acre. Um, there is some public land as well. The future land use map designation for this property is commercial. Uh, the, com the zoning of properties surrounding this property uh, include uh, rural residential one acre minimum to the north, rural uh, residential one. Uh, R120, which is residential, single family, 20,000 square feet. Uh, and then to the uh, to the northwest, you have RM15, which is multifamily, as well as the uh, Mountain Green Village Development Agreement. Uh, to the east, you have the airport uh, protection, runway protection zone. There is some commercial to the northeast, along with uh, agriculture and single family residential. Uh, in speaking with the applicant, they are requesting a continuance until uh, February 21st, um, and would like uh, to bring it back at that time. Okay, so the request is to postpone. Until February 21st, I'll give them a little bit more time. Do we want to open the public hearing and I, take the public comments for the people that are here so they I don't have to come back wise, again? And we can just continue the public hearing on the 21st. So um, with that, would you like to make a motion? I'll make a motion that we open the public hearing with respect to this matter. Second. We motion a second to open the public hearing. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Motion passes. We are now in public hearing. For item G, M D Nelson rezone request. Good evening. I'm here representing Tina Kelly. She wanted to be here to make some comments, but was unable to come, so she asked if I would read her comments into the record. Commissioner, I hope you have in your packets the draft minutes from the Planning Commission public hearing because they had a healthy discussion regarding the two years of work which they did on the TZ zone. The new planner, Josh, was not aware of all the work they put into it nor where they intended the TZ zone designation to be used. And they focused on two definitions which they added to the code at the time to distinguish the zone. I believe Commissioner Newton and Commissioner McConnell were part of the discussions at the time and may remember how much time was spent on this. To begin with, I did not like the town center designation. Well, really, I still do not like it, but it passed and exists today. I believe it was created to give the county more say over the commercial development in the town center. It was discussed at the time, possible future areas for a TZ zone, possibly in Peterson and Croydon way down the road, but mainly Mountain Green that growth is occurring there now. The discussion on Mountain Green was very specific to which area was being considered. This property is not in the town center. Its current entrance is just under one mile, nine-tenths of a mile, away from the town center and is south and east of the current Mountain Green Fire Station. And this area was not discussed as part of the town center when the Planning Commission was developing the zone. The town center was specifically spoken about as that area around Trapper's Loop where the interchange would come in and connect at that intersection, as well as property east of Sinclair and north of Old Highway, since the property south of Old Highway is a is in a CD zone and covered by a development agreement. The applicant wants a commercial zone. However, the TC zone allows for multiplexes and high density housing. This property is on the outskirts of Mountain Green and should therefore, according to good planning training, be you getting less dense, not higher density. And there are other commercial zones possible. The applicant maintains he wants a commercial zone and that the future land use says commercial, so he feels it is appropriate. However, again, the TZ designation allows for high density housing, which was not contemplated by the future land use map for that area. This zone does not exist, this zone did not exist at the time the last general plan was updated. Nor by the area plan for Mountain Green 
which is part of the general plan as an exhibit. There are other commercial zones which would be more appropriate. A rezone is a legislative action. It should never be a given. This is the area where you have the most leeway for consideration. There are no boxes to be checked on a county form as a subdivision or CDP process. There are a lot of things that should come together to make a rezone feasible, but they are not codified as a list. Things like this, the right things like, is this the right time and place? You cannot ask the applicant what they're planning on doing on the property once it is rezoned, or at least you cannot hold them to what they say. You cannot make a rezone with conditions as the county learned the hard way in the past. You should look at the zone and ask yourselves if it is appropriate. Look at all the uses allowed by the zone being requested, not just what you think they might do based on what they say they might do. It is a serious legislative decision that deserves a good deal of deliberation. A reason such as this will impact not only the landowner, but the neighboring properties as well, as a community as a whole. I encourage you to deny this rezone application. Tina Keller. Thank you. My name is Mike Wasserda. I have lived in Mountain Green for over 40 years. <clears throat> I guess it was about 30 years ago, I was lucky enough, privileged enough to serve on the master planning committee for Mountain Green. There were three things I remember very, very distinctly as we went things over and over and over. Number one is the center, the center city, city of Mountain Green, would be the intersection of Crappers Loop and Oak Highway. That was resolute. Number two was, is the further we got away from that center, then the houses would be less and less dense. And right now we have uh, the bank, we have leaves coming in by the end of the year, there's a nice park down there, there's old farm markets down there, That's a, and there's an intersection coming there. The beautiful thing about it is, it's all in harmony with what we visioned 30 years ago. And by gosh, we're sticking to it. We have a lot of less uh, denser housing there around that intersection. We have, what, 93 townhomes going in. There are 28 already there. There's 183 units going in 52 acres. I think that's probably what we need for our town center and as far as this cluster type of housing. Now, you think about Lake Warner, and Paul, I spoke with them, the Warner subdivision is going to have half-acre lots. That's also in harmony with getting further away from the town center. We have less uh, less dense housing. Lamb subdivision is half acre lots. Rose Hills half acre lots. Old Cottonwoods half acre lots. Why do we want to mess things up by putting the town center so far away from what we envision our town center to be? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> Okay, last call for public comment here. All right, we'll look for a motion to move out of the public hearing and reconvene the public meeting. So moved. Second. A motion, a second. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Okay, motion passes. All right, we are now back in the public meeting. Um, we have a request to postpone this item until our February 21st meeting. Can we discuss it at all? Sure. Before we postpone it? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, because I know the applicant's here, and I'd like to... I, I would, oh, we can't do that. I, I wouldn't necessarily start asking questions of the applicant if they've asked to postpone it. I, oh, okay. don't, I don't think that's probably... I, didn't, I don't know that. But if you wanted to have a discussion amongst the commission about where we're at... I have a, I have a question here. Is In this one shot of the future land use map, it shows <clears throat> that the road is a long ways away from where their entrance is probably going to be within this plot. Um, and everybody talks about it being 0 0.9 miles or one mile away from the town center, yet it's adjacent to the town center. And I'm just curious if it's adjacent to it, it seems to me like a portion of that should not be rezoned, but a portion could be rezoned. 
Well, uh, split zoning of property is not best practice, fine practice. Um, it creates issues down the road. Uh, split zoning property gives dual zone entitlements. Um, they get the entitlements of both zones. So is this but, all currently but one parcel? Or is it multiple parcels? It's one parcel currently that they're gotcha. requesting. My understanding is that they're looking to get access through the Mountain Green Development Agreement. It's going to come down through the accesses that are being created by uh, these marketplaces through the RM15 and then into this property. Within the town center itself. Mm -hmm. okay. So that that's just the order of the process. Right, and all of that I mean, will... Because you're right. We, if, we subdiv if they subdivided the land, we could apply a different zone on different parcels. That's correct. But even if they come forward with site plan review, we will deal with all the access questions, infrastructure improvement through the site plan review process. And the reason why I ask is because the interchange is going right next to it. The interchange, it's a, it's according to what we've got on our maps, the interchange... It's a 20-acre uh, parcel away from it, but yes. It's what? It's, there's a 20-acre parcel between this parcel and the interchange. So but yes, I'm very close to it. it. I'm not seeing that. It's either. that square right there. I can put it up on the map. I know that. Right here, there's a square before the interchange. No, it's right here. This is where the interchange goes, right there. That's the rest stop, right there. And it's going to come go right out through here and go right there. Page. Yeah. So there's a parcel between. There we go. There. This parcel is between the. And the interchange is here. This is what they're talking about. Right. We'd have to get a better map, an interactive yeah. map. Yeah, I, I think we're a little further into the discussion than we probably ought to be. Well, I'm just curious. We can postpone. do it later, so it's okay. Okay. I'm fine. I'm just curious. Are you good? Do we have a motion then to postpone this item? So moved. Okay. Second. The motion is second to postpone until the February 21st meeting. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? The motion passes. That brings us to our commissioner comments section. Uh, Do you want me to? Oh, oh, sorry. If I could just take maybe five minutes to introduce the new planner. Yes, and that'd him be great. Introduce himself to you before you move on. That'd Does be that wonderful. Be okay. Yeah. Uh, this is Jeremy Lance. He's a recent graduate of Southern Utah University. Uh, we worked with um, Blaine Fackrell and I, I don't remember their name. Joel. It was Joel and somebody yeah. else. Thank you. Um, uh, Jeremy applied. We uh, interviewed him along with a couple of the candidates. Uh, we really liked uh, what Jeremy uh, had to offer, and so we offered him a job, and he's now here. So if you want him to introduce himself a little bit. That would be great, yes. Jeremy. Tell us a little about yourself. Sure, yeah. So being here uh, reminds me of my time at the state capitol where I was an intern. So Representative Norman Thurston of yep. District 64, Provo, South mm -hmm. Provo. Um, and so my background is political science and public administration. Those are my uh, respective degrees from Brigham Young University and Southern Utah University. And uh, uh, this is my first real job out of college. It's uh, cool to have chosen a cool career, and uh, it's, it's awesome to be here. I'm excited to learn. We're grateful to have you. Thank you. And, um, Where are you living? So uh, my family lives in the uh, new townhouses by Tractor Supply Co. Oh, cool. And okay. so, yeah, there are every plot there is brand new and so we're the first occupants of our little townhouse that's good so, that's awesome yeah. well we're glad to have you in town and Thank you. Um, it doesn't always snow like this but we're glad <laughs> it is snowing like this this year <laughs> could have fooled me <laughs> I, saw some, I saw my neighbor with one of those double uh snow pushers like a metal one and i was there with my little family dollar <laughs> yeah, you might want to upgrade <laughs> maybe, maybe i should not this one twice that I'm in. Yeah, figure that out. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Jeremy, and welcome, and we're glad to have you. Appreciate it. Awesome. Okay, we'll move to Commissioner Comments. Commissioner Fackel. You're on the top of the list. I know, I've got to get her to change that. <laughs> Whoa! Whoa! That's a privilege. Well, maybe before, let me ask, a, I don't have a comment, but I have a question. Josh, can you just give us an update on the planned area development 
is that ready to go to planning commission yet? Um, I've actually been going through and making edits. Okay. I'm trying to get through it. Once I get through all of my edits, I was going to forward it to each of the commissioners to go through. Um, I'd, I'd like to see some of it changed. I, I think it's going into too much detail about different um, commercial village or uh, districts within a district, and that might be kind of confusing to enforce okay. on the road. So I'm, I'm trying to kind of pare it back a little bit and let people who want to develop their property using this plan development to kind of dictate what uh, what they want it to be. Um, and then maybe designate within that a, a, an underlay or an overlay of overall commercial or overall mixed use or residential or, or, or whatnot. Um, once I get those edits, I'll, I'll forward it to you and um, you, you all can review the edits and delete them or add them or what, whatever. Okay. And, and then on the airport, Zone, are you working on that as well? Or was that before you came? That, that might be before I came. I don't know. I don't know that that edit. Okay, so um, that I forwarded, I guess, prior to you getting here. So we need to pick that up because okay. it mo it's really not so much land use planning in that one as it is the composition of the Airport Authority Board. And and some changes to that. I'll find that email. Does it also address the second phase? Because the second phase is it's kind of our code says that the second phase will be completed at a future date. Correct. So we've incorporated the exhibit of the nine line lease as the second phase. Okay. And because it includes the entire area Seems. of the second phase. Okay. So I'll find the email where I sent that and get it to you, but that's another thing that we need to process. So, okay, thanks. Um, if I could add to that, I did make changes to the agriculture farm uh, zone uh, text amendment, and I forwarded that to each of you. If you wanted to take a read through that and see if my additions um, were, if you want to keep them or, or, or whatnot, and then we can work on getting that on a future meeting as well. Yeah, and those have to go through Planning Commission. So, well, that was one of my questions. So that, I think, came to the County Commission, and the County Commission continued it, or did they... So it's already been through Planning Commission? I thought it had gone through Planning Commission and it came to you, but I might be wrong. I believe it has. Um, okay. I don't know if the member Sessions remembers, but... I'm, I'm sorry, I'm just talking, what are we talking about? The farm, the text amendment to the farm on the R120 and... Yeah, it's gone. Oh, you mean animal? Yeah. And yes. Half the, the, check, the chickens, the rabbits. Farm animals and residential yeah. zones. The horses. Yes. It has gone to us. Yeah. So if we've got their recommendation, these are just changes requested by the commission, county commission, then it would just come back. But the other two will have to be processed through okay. planning commission for recommendation and then back to so us. So the changes that I made, I don't know if they were... They were just ones that I read through, and I'm like, this probably should be clarified. So I've made some changes to the actual text. The Planning Commission has not seen my changes. I'm happy to have you take them back and have them take a look at the changes and make a recommendation on them specifically. Okay. All right. I'm going to do that. I don't know if anyone else disagrees with that, but we might as well get the recommendation from my perspective. Yeah, I agree. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Thank you. Okay. Uh, just a reminder, tomorrow's the day on the Hill. Legislative session started. Um, then also on the 23rd of January, the Trails Committee is meeting with the plan, the draft plan. Um, Fair, and, Fair and Pierce? Fair and Pierce, yeah. Uh, they'll be there on that date to show it to us. And Can you, sorry, Brian, can you, oh, 23rd Monday? 23rd Monday. Okay. Yeah, at 6 o'clock. And um, we've been meeting with um, the people that are trying to help us with our tourism plan in the county. And uh, uh, we met again today. And it's moving along. The next one I will be sending out to you what they come up with. You guys need to review it. And then we'll have our final one with them with any kind of refinements that you guys want to see happen within the tourism. 
uh, area and what is to be expected. Um, also, just for your information, we have a wrestling tournament coming. The region wrestling tournament is going to be here at Morgan High on the 3rd and 4th of February. And the tourism department's already been notified of it. They've let the people know that potentially could have a home or you know places for people to stay. stay. They've let them know for the hotel and East Canyon Resort and any of those places. Um, or not resort. Yeah, the resort and the park. So that way we can accommodate all the people that are going to be coming in. They expect about 1,200 people. So the community needs to be aware that we're going to have an influx of people here on the 3rd and 4th for the region wrestling tournament. So... Anyway. So when you say they ask people to take people in, what are you talking about? No, I'm talking about you've got the hotels, places, because you've got 1,200 people that are going to be coming here. We've got 56 rooms at the hotel. Yeah. You've got uh, approximately 60 up at East Canyon. They could bring in their trailers. They've got the yurts, the cabins that they could stay in that are heated. Um, almost a dome. And Yeah, almost a dome, but it's not heated yet. <laughs> cold right now. <laughs> Those yeah, are pretty cool. We're going to be staying in Ogden, um, Colville. And then yeah. if there's any, yeah, and there's going to be, they've also notified the other two uh, hotels, so that way, you know, people can stay close to Morgan, and hopefully we get, fill our hotels and fill our campgrounds, because that's more tax money coming into us uh, as our county grows. That's great. Okay. And so, anyway, that's just something to look forward to between now and our next meeting. Okay. Awesome. You didn't have any comments. Um, I just wanted to make a, a comment regarding the um, amount of snow that we've received this year, which is, a, I think, a huge blessing for us, and I'm really grateful for that. Our um, public works department has been working a lot of long hours plowing snow and trying to keep our roads clear and uh, I think there has been a couple of instances where they've gotten a little bit of a bad rap for leaving snow in people's driveways. I just want to publicly <laughs> thank the Public Works Department for that work. Um, there was, there's was, there been a couple times when they've worked 10 and 11 hours straight to try to keep roads clear. I know Brett comes by my house about 4 o'clock in the morning into Croydon trying to keep that clear, especially with the bridge out. There's a lot of extra work and time that has to go into doing that. Um, and for the for the benefit of the public, our public works department is not trying to fill your driveway with snow. That's just where it lands when it falls off the plow. <laughs> and there's not a lot they can do about that. They can try to adjust the plow a little bit. Sometimes they do, but you can't do that between every single house necessarily. So please be patient with them. They're, they're working hard and doing their best. They have to leave their families at all hours of the day and night to, to try to keep our roads clear, so we appreciate your support of them. And if you do happen to see one of our, our drivers out and, and have an opportunity, please thank them and, and let them know that we appreciate them keeping us safe. Them keeping those roads clear is a really important thing when it comes to, to public safety. You know, getting being able to just get a fire truck or an ambulance to your house if if there was a problem. So. Well, and when we get this much snow, they've got to wing it back. And when they, they do. Wing, when they wing it back, it's going to come in our it's driveways. The way it's going to be. It's the snow that we pushed from our driveways out into the road. So. And, you know, that's something else I have noticed, and I, I hope members of the public will kind of stop doing this. There, there is a tendency for some folks to push the snow clear across the road out of your driveway. That's great if you're going to clean the road off, but I see a lot of people leaving big chunks of snow on the road. That causes problems both for us and for other drivers. You know, those turn to ice and you hit them with a car and it's a problem. So please, if you're going to push it across your dry, or across a public road, take the time to clean the road off really well where you push it across. That's all I had. Commissioner Anderson. Uh, just one update. I got an email today for the um, Weber River floodplain mapping study that we've been oh, awesome. talking about and informed about. We were... Um, awarded that grant. Uh, we need to get an agreement from, I think it's going to be from CIB. So once that agreement comes in and we get that signed, then I'll work with Garrett on procurement to get an um, engineer group on board to, to do that work for us. So Great. It's, gonna, it's moving forward. 
And then I've got a very small thing to go into closed session for, but it should be quick. Okay. Um, I just one thing. The mayor called me today and and said that he has an individual that would like to find a home for a slaughterhouse um, here in Morgan. So he asked me to keep an eye out of where that might be able to be. Um, we do have a need for that here, Drastic. big time. Um, where do they where do they take their animals to be slaughtered now? Well, or how does it work? Most of no, them, if you can. Yeah, Bingham's basically unless you're a big, they just tell you to go somewhere else. So I end up taking mine or having mobile, but Champion does it for me from Riverdale. Um, but there's there there's a big, big, big those. need of it. Yeah. A lot of people are taking them clear down to by, by, by Brigham City out west there. That's, that's where I used to take some wine. And that's nothing. I go clear up to Tires Meat St. Louis in Utah. And my next date is a year and a half from now. So and I, have I have to keep, to have I have to keep my date inspected. every year or I, I lose it and it's yeah. gone. So and I, that's the end of November, which I'd rather have a little earlier but but anyway we have a need and they want to do it and they don't want to just do a small one they'd like to do a, a nice one they have investors and they they don't really want to put their name out there yet but they, they're looking for some ground so where are they looking at any particular location nope anywhere in morgan county anywhere in morgan county okay how many acres do they need Or at least a couple. Yeah, I would think so. Two or three, probably. some stock, a little bit of a stockyard. That place out west of Willard there is, gosh, that's not very big. It's not. I mean, I think they, I think they slaughter every beef that comes in there every night. So they just say, you know, we'll take this many. But, so are they looking for a USDA inspected facility, or are they going to go just for a state inspected or a custom? I don't know that. Okay, have them call me, and I can work with them on it because I've been working on it for a while now. Okay. Trying to find somebody who wants to do it and potential land that we've already, I've already identified. I have, I haven't, and I've asked around. There's a couple of locations that could possibly do it. Okay, I'll have, okay. I'll have the mayor call you. What's the zoning requirement of that, and do we have that currently available? Well, there's actually technically, really from what I can see. No designation in our code that addresses stockyards or slaughterhouses. Um, it used to be a feedlot one. Is that still there? That's yeah. the cattle. Yeah. Oh, we have not done a thing. Um, the only thing that I can see would be underneath the agriculture section. I'll read the exact language. But. Um, we have accessory buildings and uses customarily incidental to a permitted use. Um, those are permitted outright. Uh, if a condition, if something requires a conditional use permit, then the accessory building and uses customarily incidental to that conditional use uh, requires a conditional use. Um, so, if you consider it as part of, uh, you know agriculture including grazing and pasturing of animals as a as part of that then it would it would be outright permitted in uh, a20 okay. f1 me160 all the way down to rr1 yes we just put it right next to your house man I, I real, they really don't stink no actually yeah, they're pretty they clean operations I mean we have a we have a facility right here in the middle of the town. I mean, I know that's not a slaughterhouse, but they're they're processing meat. Yeah. So. I mean, they take when they come and to right the now house they're to doing do the slaughter. In they leave fields. A, a, <laughs> yeah. a bulge of hay that was in the belly, and that's it. They take everything and get money for everything. Yeah. So. The hide and everything. Yeah. I can okay. Agree with that. Hmm. Thank you. Anything else? Yeah, hey, you're getting an education tonight. Yeah. <laughs> that is that. Did you have a good steak, yeah. not the slaughter. <laughs> All right. We have a request to go into closed session for? Uh, discuss the purchase, exchange, or lease of real property. Okay. I'll second it. We have a motion, a second. 
Going into closed session is a roll call vote, so we'll start with Commissioner Fackrell. Aye. Commissioner McConnell. Aye. I vote aye. Commissioner Anderson. Aye. And Commissioner Wilson. Aye. Okay, we will move into closed session. Following the closed session, it's anticipated that we will return a public